Suddenly calm nerve, control poise, realize what is at hand. Across the way, the locker room of the Philadelphia Stars. Just last Saturday, part of a considerable miracle to get to Denver, Colorado for the championship game. Their 15 wins, they came from behind a number of times. They know well the rewards of enduring, persevering, believing in themselves. Because in the game that bought them the ticket to the championship game was one of the more remarkable football comebacks ever. Trailing 38-17 to Chicago with 12 minutes to play. They fought back, tied the game on Tom Donovan's 10-yard touchdown with just 50 seconds to play. And then, in overtime, Philadelphia won the toss. Drove 73 yards, beating Chicago 44-38 in overtime as Kelvin Bryant scored over the top. The Michigan Panthers rolling into the playoffs, defeated Pacific Division champion Oakland 37 to 21. John Williams scoring five yards out to tie the game at seven early, and then a record USFL crowd of 60,237 roared as Ken Lacey streaked into the end zone to complete the purchase of the championship game ticket for the Michigan Panthers. And tonight, ABC Sports presents... The first championship game of the United States Football League. The Michigan Panthers and the Philadelphia Stars. The city of Denver, Colorado. Surrounded by green. The snow-capped Rockies. A skyline that continues to reach upward, glittering with its white and glass. On a beautiful summer night, we are at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, for this first USFL championship game. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Keith Jackson, and welcome to Denver for the championship game of the USFL. There is no question but what the two best teams in this first year of the USFL are in the championship game. Though Michigan rolled in relatively easy, Philadelphia had to fight for their lives, but they are here. And now I'd like to introduce you to a young man who's been in this pressure situation before as a wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers for so many years, Lynn Swan. Swanny, what are they going through right now? Well, the, the nerves are really high. They're trying to stay calm. They're trying to think about that game plan, think about the things they've done all year, not put it out of perspective, and just relax, stay calm, and execute. Above all, they want to execute. Yep. Young man from Northwest Louisiana, 6'4", 210 pounds, our rookie. Just a baby, really, in this game, Bobby Bear, probably facing one of the tight moments of his life. He's been facing tight moments throughout the year because he's had to fight for this starting job. And he's had a lot of help. As he has developed, so have his three wide receivers, his two wide receivers and tight end. Carlin and Holloway, both deep threats. Cobb, a good tight end, can keep the play moving with the short pass underneath. Carter in particular, the big play man for Michigan. Like Holloway, small man in a big man's game, but oh, what speed. He averaged just under 20 yards on each of his 60 catches this year. And Anthony says this about his team role. Well, I think we're going to need some big plays, um, especially out of myself and also Derek Holloway, because uh, once we do that, I think it gets the team fired up, uh, motivation going, and uh, once we do that, we try to get our running game going, too. The Michigan running game is tough. Ken Lacey, 225 pounds, average better than five yards. John Williams, average better than four. The offensive line, though, Lynn Swan, is what makes these fellows sing. Well, they're a classic running back tandem, and they got some help in the middle of the season with those acquisitions from Pittsburgh. They opened up big holes with the quickness and speed of Lacey and the power of Williams, and that's the line up there. No one less than 250 pounds. McGriff, Dornbrook, and Penny, the three from Pittsburgh, and two big young ball players, Radloff and Guthrie, who are learning quickly. And outside linebacker John Corker led the league in decking quarterbacks. He's 6'6", 235, and the key to him is don't let it get started. Well, if you let John Corker get started, he'll run over people, as you see right here. He usually switches from side to side throughout the season. 
during the last playoff game, he just stayed on the right side of that defensive line of the defensive lineup. The offense will have to do some adjusting to take care of John Corker. Novo Bajovic, born in Yugoslavia, the place kicker for Michigan, educated at Central Michigan University. Good range, 8 out of 15, outside 40 yards. Now, the Philadelphia Stars being introduced here at Mile High Stadium right now, posted a 15-3 and record to win the Atlantic Division. They beat the Michigan Panthers in their only game play, 29-20 this year, in Philadelphia, and they held Michigan to six points in the second half. Keith, it's character. Both these ball clubs have a great deal of character, and when you talk about that, you really have to start with number 14, Chuck Fusina. He's out of Penn State. People say he doesn't have all the natural talent in the world, and on defense, Mike Lush and Scott Warner are the two safeties. You see their stats. They are going to have their hands filled today, trying to handle the deep throw to both Holloway and Carter, and they're going to have to turn in a good performance to win. Dave Trout was the league's leading scorer. He's been troublesome with back problems, but he's jacked up. And last week, we saw how important a role he can play. So that's a brief look at the teams. We'll be back for the toss of the coin and a visit with each of the coaches right after this timeout from Mile High Stadium. Again, a note on the weather. 85 degrees at game time, and there are some thunderstorm warnings, but they are hopeful it's not going to hit the city of Denver. Jim Stanley now has already put on the armor, ready with the communication system to make sure that everything is working. And we have now, I think, the last of the skydivers coming down in the center of the stadium as part of the pregame ceremony, and we're just about ready to play football. Very quickly, let me run down the officials for this ball game. Bill Parkinson, administrative dean at California Pennsylvania State College, the referee. Umpire is Jerry Hart, general manager of international sales for Steel Company in Pittsburgh. Stuart Ross, director of city parks and recreation in Paso Robles, California, the headlinesman. The back judge is Dick Eichhorst, assistant superintendent of schools in St. Louis. Robert Klimmer is the chairman and director of uh, athletics at City College San Francisco. He's a field judge. The line judge, Larry Hill, who works for the post office in Landover, Maryland, the station manager. Dave Kamanska, the alternate. He is a resident of Santa Ana, California, and the track and field coach at Cerritos uh, Community College. So Bill Parkinson now will flip the coin, and it's a coin used uh, uh, in this instance because it was minted as part of the collection for the 1984 Olympics. That Olympic coin will be tossed out. Michigan, you are the visiting team. This is a head. It's a head. This is a head. This is tails. 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 Call the coin before I toss it. Call. He calls tails. He calls tails. Tails. It is a head. Head. Philadelphia wins the toss. I don't know if you can call that an omen or not, but Philadelphia won the toss in uh, in the overtime, so that must feel pretty good about that. The keys to victory, that's a common phrase around the football stadium a few hours before game time. Here's what coaches Jim Stanley and Jim Mora have to say. I think the key in any playoff game is who plays the best defense. It's obvious that both teams have great offensive teams, and I think that in a playoff situation, a Super Bowl game, or any game before that goes, that the team that plays the best defense has the greatest chance of winning. Uh, it's obvious that Philadelphia has two great running backs. Calvin Bryant is one of the better ones in the league. I think they have a great quarterback. And in order to slow them guys down, you have to have a good defensive team, and I think that's definitely a key for us. Well, I think defensively, we've got to keep them from uh, getting a big play on us. They've had a tendency the last few games to hit Carter or Holloway with a big play or break Lacey or Williams for a long run. We can't let them do that. Uh, offensively, we've got to keep them off balance with uh, motions and, and formation changes and things like that so they just can't lay their ears back and come after us. And number three, we've got to win the kicking game. Well, that's how the coaches felt a few hours ago as they prepared to come to the ball game, the first USFL championship game, and Michigan will kick off. Novo Bojovic, who had a fine season for Michigan, but I noticed one thing about him. Once in a while, I think his concentration might break down a bit. He has missed some extra points when one would not have thought that he would. But when the pressure seems on and the ball game's at stake, He's been tough. It always seems the case, not just with kickers, Keith, but with any athlete 
when you've got something in front of you that seems very simple, easy to do, you put your guard down a little bit, and that's just when something goes wrong. But in a pressure game like this, you don't have to worry about concentration because they all have it. Alan Harvin, rookie out of Cincinnati, to return the kick for Philadelphia. And the game is on. Bojovic hooks it, and it will go out of bounds. So he will be penalized five yards. He will kick from the 30. Uh, Bojovic is not happy with himself. Uh, all the players on the team, when they see something like that, they just have to continue to bridle that energy. They're ready to go out and play football. So while we reassemble for the kickoff, let us check in with our colleague on the sidelines, Tim Brandt. Thanks, Keith. This field down here is hard. It is lightning fast right now. The only problem the players may have is in the north end of the stadium where they sodded it Tuesday. The sod looks like it held very firmly and has taken nicely. But there is a little bit of a crown, so if a receiver is looking over his shoulder for the ball, he could have a problem. Both teams appear loose. We're ready to go. Try that kick again. They tee it up on the 30. And right now, a thunderstorm that was hanging just beyond the rim of Mile High Stadium has passed on to another location hopefully leaving this neighborhood. I think that face right there of Jim Stanley tells you something of the pressure well, that's, that's the same, on him. That's the same kind of face he's had all year. Keith. Well that's right. <laughs> Doesn't change a lot does it? No. Bojovic hits it very very high and he hit it long back to the one yard line to Alan Harvin. He looks for his wedge. He gets some room to the sideline. And he comes across the 30 to about the 32. Lonel Fee brought him down for the Michigan Panthers. Chuck Fusina trots out on the field to operate the Philadelphia Stars offense. Chuck Fusina, who was with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at one time, Kelvin Bryant and Booker Russell will set up in the backfield behind him with Willie Collier and Scott Pitsky, the wide receivers, and the tight end is Big Steve Folsom out of Utah at 6'4", 230. It'll be very interesting to see early what Philadelphia's offensive line can do with the Michigan defense. They add Tom Donovan in there, so they've got three wide receivers, and they put Donovan in motion. And David Greenwood, safety goes with him as Philadelphia opens out of the shotgun formation. They drop it off to Kelvin Bryant on a screen, and Bryant is brought down quickly at the 35 as John Crocker penetrated the blocking and brought him down. So he picked up only three yards on the play. Well, Chuck Fusina dropped back in the shotgun, and I thought they might try and come throw the ball the first play just to keep some pressure on the defense of Michigan. A safe little screen pass, but it's John Corker who gets right through the screen and makes a tackle, shoestring tackle on Kelvin Bryant. If Corker had not penetrated, Bryant might have picked up 15 or so. Donovan is out now, and Rodney Parker goes in at the wide position. And Fusina is under the center. And he's going to throw it again. He throws it short over the middle to Kelvin Bryant. He gets one block, but that's not enough. He is up to the 38-yard line where Robert Pennywell brings him down. Now let's check the offensive front for Philadelphia. Brad Oates at tackle, 275. Rich Garza at guard, 260. Bart Oates at center, 265. Chuck Comiskey, 280 at guard. And Irv Eatman, 280 at guard. The Michigan defense lines up with three nose men, four linebackers, and we'll give you them in just a moment. Right now, Philadelphia is looking at third down and a long two. 34% conversion rate on the season on third down plays. You've seen it back. He goes deep with it down the sidelines for Pitsky. It is too deep. And there was good coverage by Clarence Chapman of Michigan. It's fourth down for Philadelphia. So the Michigan defensive front of Padgett, Tipton, and company, uh, Alan Hughes, Kyle Ball and Robert Pennywell, Ray Bentley, and John Corker, Oliver Davis, John Arno, David Greenwood, and Clarence Chapman do their job. Sean Landetta comes in to punt, averaged almost 42 yards per punt on the season. His long was 72. He is a good one. Ron L. Fee and Anthony Carter are the deep people. There is no pressure. The kick is very, very high and long. It goes to the end zone. Barely. <laughs> it hit on the goal line and then kicked back. It's a 61-yard punt for Sean Landetta. So the young man from Towson State does his job. Well, Jim Morris said that he felt his special teams had to play well. And Allen Harvin's kickoff return to the 30 and then the punt into the end zone. If they're indicative of the way their special team is going to play, they may have an edge in field position. We'll see when we come back in a moment. Michigan Panthers start from their 20 with Bobby Hebert at quarterback. 
Cleo Miller starting ahead of John Williams. John's got a sore toe. Fullback is Ken Lacey. He's a big fella. 225. Anthony Carter, the silver streak from Michigan, is at a wide receiver. Derek Holloway, a flyer from Arkansas, the other wide man. The tight end is Mike Cobb. Big man. Very good pass receiver at tight end out of Michigan State. John Williams, toe being hurt sounds like a minor injury, but turf toe is almost a dislocation. Yeah. Very painful. Very. The first snap for the Michigan Panthers. They give it to Cleo Miller. And Cleo Miller, who played nine years with the Cleveland Browns out of Arkansas, is rolled back. But he did pick up a couple. Make it out to near the 24 before they were finally able to control him. He weighs 215. Up front for the Michigan Panthers, Chris Godfrey, 250 at tackle. Tyrone McGriff, 265 at guard. Wayne Randloff, 265 at center. Tom Dornbrook, 250 at guard. Ray Penny, 255 at tackle. Tyrone McGriff is only 265, and I'm Red Grange. <laughs> Look out now. He got after you last Sunday for talking about his weight. Hebert turns and hands the ball to Ken Lacey. Great blocking on the left side. And the big guy, the rookie out of Tulsa, boats out to the 33 for a first down before Vince DiMarinas can bring him down at a linebacking position. That was number 33 on number Cleo Miller, number 33. They took out number 53, Jim Brooks, that opened up the hole for Williams to go through. Philadelphia's defensive unit, Case Ofer Fielder, down in front, Bunning, Howard, Mills, Brooks at the linebacking spots with Antonio Gibson, Scott Warner, Mike Lush, and Jonathan Sutton. Now Howard is out, and De Marinas replacing him at that spot. Lynn's got a sore ankle. The ball is at the 32, where it's first down for the Michigan Panthers. So that's something for their record book. Up the middle. Goes Ken Lacey. He gets a yard. There's John Williams on the bench. He will play. He's been practicing all week. You got someone like Cleo Miller who's played very well for quite Michigan, a while. Michigan Cleveland. man down on the field. It is Tyrone McGriff. Last week in the in the playoff game, Tyrone did come out of the game earlier, complaining of some problems with his back. Let's hope that it, whatever is wrong with Tyrone is not too serious and another severe back injury. He is one of the three Pittsburgh Steelers in that offensive front. Was with him for three years, uh, Dornbrook and Penny being the other. You see him right there in the middle of the screen making the block and he gets rolled over there on his back. He may have rolled just, got his legs caught underneath. We can't tell just where the trainers are working on it. His replacement will be number 73, Greg Firechild, who is 6'5", 270. Out of Tulsa, he had five years with the Cincinnati Bengals. So Tyrone McGriff, the timeout is for him, and he will leave the football game with 11.24 to go in the first quarter and no score. Tyrone McGriff is on the sidelines. He has been heard to say that he is all right, but it's obvious that he has had, has some pain. Well, Tyrone has played with pain before. He knows better than go back in the ball game with an injury he can't play with. So I think in the championship ball game, if it's just a matter of coming, overcoming some pain, Tyrone McGriff will be back. Second down and nine after a gain of a yard. Michigan out at 33. And the dropping back on a delay. Give to Ken Lacey. Lacey gets around the corner. Runs over a, one of the defensive backs, Jonathan Sutton, a cornerback. Sutton only weighs uh, 195. And Lacey comes in at better than 220. And there was quite a collision. But he is short of his first down at the 40. Well, it gets out the 40-yard line, which means it's third and two. And they can pretty much do a combination of things here. They send in the extra tight end, uh, Swanee, so I think the... The grip is also back in the ball game. Looks like run, doesn't it? He just... Uh, minor little injury, I assume. Carter will come to the bottom of the picture now, and Holloway will go to the top. But this formation reads run for Michigan on third down and two. It could be a bear will roll it up. He's going to put it up. And he goes with a bullet, and he, he made a poor choice on pass receivers. He had Don Echols, uh, the tight end, wide open, number 88, going to the sidelines. He tried to get it to Holloway, and by the time the ball arrived, Holloway was upside down. Uh, he tried to kneel, thread that one through about two defensive players who were just lining up playing in the zone, and he just couldn't get it there. So in comes David Greenwood to punt, and Scott Warner will go deep for the Philadelphia Stars. So neither team... Able to move a lot in their first procession. Philadelphia choosing to throw the ball. Michigan choosing to run the ball. Michigan did get a first down. 
And now the punt by Greenwood. There's no pressure on him. It is a very good punt by the defensive back, and Scott Werner fields it at the 18, comes back outside the 20, and out to the 24. It's a 42-yard punt with a six-yard return. The tackle was made by Robert Pennywell at 10.47 to go in the first quarter with no score. That's Tom Moriarty there, defensive back, who is one of the hot men on the special teams. Scott Warner hasn't fair caught many passes, many punts throughout the season. I doubt that he'll change his mind here. Keith, I'm a little surprised that Michigan came out so conservative in their opening drive. Indeed, they did get a first down, but I would have thought they would have tried to at least put the ball up in the air deep and threaten the big play right off the bat. They are the big play team with Messrs. Holloway and Carter. Now Philadelphia operating out of the eye with Kelvin Bryant deep, and Bryant has the ball. Picks his way across the 25, slashes his way across the 30. Number 50, Ray Bentley had a shot at him, but uh, Bryant ran through him. 52, Kyle Borland hit him, but he just ran right through the tackle, then downfield for another five yards. Uh, this is a very physical Michigan football team. As you look at the down linemen, Ronnie Padgett, David Tipton, and Alan Hughes. Well, Lynn Swan, I thought last week in the Oakland ball game, and you made the point in the game that they were looked like they were just trying to hammer people rather than really make tackles. That's right, and when you come in, it's okay to stick a guy hard, but you have to wrap your arms around him and make the tackle. Bryant's got it again, cuts it back into the middle, comes bang, head up with one of those big defensive linemen, looked like 98 Alan Hughes. He got some yardage out of it, but I think Bryant right there was trying to pass on the message that I'm tough too, guys. That's right. Uh, he's going to demonstrate to them right off the bat that he can take whatever they plan to dish out, and he'll be here throughout the ball game. Conversely, they want to hit Kelvin Bryant. They want to make sure he knows he's in for a tough physical football game for four periods. The Philadelphia sideline, it is warm, 85 degrees at game time, and it is a first down for the Philadelphia Stars. The ball is at their 35. Usina up the throw, goes to the sidelines, to the tight end. Folsom, Folsom's got it. Folsom's got a first down as he gets it up to the 46. Keith, coming into the ballgame, we talked about the wide receivers of Philadelphia. Not a great deal of speed except for Willie Collier. I anticipated that the secondary for Michigan might play a little bit more man-to-man -man coverage. Not a great deal. And that time, David Greenwood, number 31, came up on the line of scrimmage, blitzed. And they were in the man-to-man -man coverage. Chuck Fusina wisely going for the short pass, and it's another first down. Now Alan Harbin has come into the lineup with Booker Russell, replacing Kelvin Bryant. Harbin has become a very good running back. He's got the ball right now. And a penalty flag goes down as Harbin crosses midfield and gets to the Michigan 49. Ray Bentley and David Greenwood come in for the hit, and uh, we'll see about the penalty. David Greenwood's a young ball player who plays aggressive football. Reads very well, and he loves to stick. Right there, he gets a clear shot and just jumps into the pile with his body. Almost got a face mask on him. That's right. The penalties against Philadelphia backs him up. The declaration now from referee Bill Parkinson. Holding, number 50 on the offense. First down. Bart Oates, the center. He's out of BYU, a rookie, the brother of Brad Oates. And I'll tell you, that's two big ones. Brad at 6'6", 275, and Bart 6'3", 265. They used to tip the dining room. <laughs> I imagine they used to have quite a few family fights from time to time, too. David Riley, number 35, is in the backfield now for Philadelphia. Fumble! On the handoff. And the fumble occurred because of the quick hit on that side of the line, and I really couldn't get the man's number, but I, I believe it was Alan Hughes. Big number 98. Zips right in there. There's yep. a hand up to Harvin. 98, Alan Hughes. Just jumps right in there, makes contact just as the ball is being handed off. Alan Harvin didn't have a chance to really grab hold of the ball. Alan Hughes of the Western Michigan. It's also a bodyguard for Tommy Hearns when he's not playing football. At the 33-yard line now for Philadelphia. And it's second down and 22. And Philadelphia has called a timeout as Chuck Fusina wants to come to the sidelines and talk with eight minutes and ten seconds to play in the first quarter with no score. Carter, he hasn't uh, been heard from yet, but he will. And yeah, he's awfully relaxed with this ball game, and <laughs> you're right. I think the next series we may see A. Bear. You see, that's A. Bear's wrist. He's got some of the plays, maybe all of them written down on his wrist there. They're wigwagged in from the sidelines. He double checks it. Philadelphia comes up now, second down and close to 23. And they send Rodney Parker, wide receiver in motion, and Fusina back to throw it. He goes the sideline pattern, and the pass is incomplete. 
Got that biscuit, the intended receiver, and Lin Swan, you really got to hum that ball to throw that pattern. Well, when you come back to the sideline, you've got to come back hard. You really have to put a lot of zip on the football because even though it's only a pass, it might be 10 yards downfield, you've got to throw maybe 20, 25 yards on the angle. Now, Clarence Chapman does a good job on the coverage here, and, and Fiske is driving hard back right there. Chapman's right on his back. Just a tough catch. He couldn't make it. Third down. And close to 23 with Kelvin Bryant and Alan Harvin, both in the backfield now. Both the uh, men who operate at the tailback or eyeback formations are good receivers. Down the middle it goes, and it is short, and it was intended for Willie Collier, and Collier was home free if the soon had been able to get him the ball. Yeah, but you see, they couldn't because number 57, John Corker, at the top of the screen, was coming in on the blitz. Single coverage. They're taking a chance. Number 22, Clarence Chapman, also coming in on the blitz. Right there, you see Chuck Fusina being thrown down from the back by John Corker, and it just took all the zip off that pass. Sean Landetta in the punt. First kick tonight was for 61 yards. Anthony Carter is the deep man. Carter standing back at about his 23. You got 10 white shirts up on the line. A low kick. Carter will have a chance with it from the 24. Out of bounds. Up around the 37. Wise move by Anthony Carter. He made the catch. A low kick. Didn't have enough time for the wall to set up to get some blocking. He tried to fake out the first man in front of him. He couldn't. So he stepped out of bounds. Maintains possession. We'll be back. All right. Here comes Michigan now for its second possession. The ball is near the 38. Let's see if they stay conservative or if Hebert goes to the air this time. Philadelphia's defense jumping around. Hebert rolls it back and he's got to throw deep and he's got Carter. And Anthony took his eyes off the ball and dropped it. Uh, a little jitters there. Freak. He had the right move on. He's wide open. He just didn't hang onto the ball. Take a look at, look at this play from Scott Warner's angle. He's the safety. You see Carter in the background waiting for the play. Now Carter with his speed. They've got to, they have to respect it. You see him backing up. He doesn't want to give away the big play quick. Carter drives Antonio Gibson back. You see him right there at the bottom of the screen. He's wide open. He jumps up. Just doesn't concentrate. There's no reason not to catch that one, except he was probably peeking to see which way to go. Second down and 10. Again, Werner was up on the line. Now Scott goes all the way back to play center field. And Bear sets up, goes short over the middle for Cleo Miller. And he's got a first down at midfield. Good little move by Cleo Miller as he just kind of jukes a linebacker there, number 52, Vince Damaris. Watch Werner now as he's right up in the line. See, now he turns around and takes off to go back and play center field. Well, the defenses you're going to see aren't going to be anything complicated. They don't have that kind of talent in the secondary that can cover an Anthony Carter one-on-one -on -one with his blazing speed, so they have to try and disguise it. They've been known to blitz a great deal, and it was their blitzing that beat Michigan in the second half the first time these two teams met. Ball at the 49-yard line of Michigan, and Bear back to throw. He goes down the sidelines for Derek Holloway. He doesn't hold on to it. And again, a Michigan wide receiver had a chance to make the catch. Derek started to turn it back inside and then realized that Bear was going to nail it deep, and... By that time, he had lost contact with it. Well, I think it. what happened there, Derek was looking for the ball inside and just hesitated for a moment, and that cost him a half a stride that would have made that a perfect catch. Jonathan Sutton, number 26, was on the coverage. Was beaten on the play. What? He's beaten on the play, but he's only playing a zone, Keith. There was help on the inside. They're playing a two-deep zone, but whenever you play it, there's the potential of a hole opening up between the corner and the safety. If the safety's covered too much of the outside, it opens up down the middle. Second down and 10 from the 49 for Michigan. No score, first quarter, 6.55 to play. Bear is going to throw again. He swings it out to Ken Lacey. Penalty flag thrown up here. There's a scuffle going on between Derek Holloway and Jonathan Sutton. It is a big play by Ken Lacey as he takes the ball down to the 37 of Philadelphia, but let's see about the penalty. Jonathan Sutton and Derek Holloway got tangled up and they started trading some blows. And that's where the flag came from. It is offensive pass interference against Michigan. Well, the possibility you see Derek Holloway walking away is that when you set up a screen, you have to give it time to set up. Holloway may have run downfield. 
and sort of blocking just a bit too soon while the ball was in the air. Offensive pass interference, number 29 on the offense, loss of down. I should Third tell down. you this, that Derek Holloway stands only 5'7", weighs 165. He's a little bit outsized with Jonathan Sutton, 6'1", 195. <laughs> He certainly is, but I've seen in the game so far that neither he nor Anthony Carter are afraid to go in and make the blocks on the big people. From the 39 now of Michigan, third down and 20. They're about 37.5% on the season and converting on third down. Lacey's a very good pass receiver, but he's in there to block now. And Abair has a lot of time, throws to Carter, and Carter makes the catch at the just inside the 45 of Philadelphia but that's short of the first down by about three yards good play by the defense of the Philadelphia Stars who come up they fake the blitz but then they just drop back with five people covering the short zone you see how you see Anthony Carter just driving his cut man deep Jonathan Sutton then he turns back to the outside cut Sutton did a good job of staying with him but when the receiver comes back to the ball he forms a screen between him between the ball and the cornerback so he can make the catch David Greenwood's first punt tonight traveled 42 yards. Scott Warner back to return it. He returned the first one six yards. No pressure. Angles it downfield toward the corner, and he hit the corner. At the six. <laughs> Excellent punt. Greenwood just took his time. He got the protection. It wasn't a pretty kick. But he did what he had to do, putting the ball out to the six-yard line, backing up the Philadelphia offense, now giving the Michigan defense a chance to put him in the hole. Still a scoreless ball game. Two or three ways to look at the circumstance. Whatever, however you look at it, it's not cozy for Philadelphia, but it would seem to me, Lynn Swan, it's a chance for the Michigan defense to really lay its ears back right here. I think so. I, I think you may find them playing a little bit, taking more chances, a little bit more man-to-man -man coverage, keeping the linebackers up to the line of scrimmage to stop Kelvin Bryant. Greenwood is right up on the line of scrimmage. Safety. They give it to Kelvin Bryant. He gets a good block and gets around the corner and gets a first down. So that offensive unit up front for Philadelphia did the job. Right now, let's check in with Tim Brandt and Anthony Carter. Keith, Michigan is already thinking about his next offensive series. Philadelphia's been showing a lot of man, Anthony Carter, and they've been playing a little bit soft in the corners. Looks like you can have that corner. Yeah, they playing everything we expected them to play. We just got to go out and execute the things that uh, Coach designed for us up in the booth and uh, just execute. Okay, any surprises? Uh, not, not yet so far. We're just going to try to fill them out and see what we can do early in the game and then try to make some adjustments in the second half. Okay, Keith. From the 17, it is a first down for Philadelphia. The play's in the middle, and it's good across the 20. Alan Harbin carrying the ball and brought down by Alan Hugh. Well, the offensive line, of, if you look at Sam Hills, number 54, outstanding linebacker for Philadelphia. The out offensive line for Philadelphia is doing a very good job. They, they got them out of the hole now, back to the 20-yard line, on the excellent play, uh, the first play from the line of scrimmage, where Kelvin Bryant just broke to his favorite side of that line, the right side, behind Comiskey and Eatman. Second down and about eight. Send the tight end in motion, cut Bryant back into the middle, and it's good for a couple of yards. Well, that time, it's just a little play, sliding back towards the middle, trying to soften it up a little bit. Kelvin Bryant, most people didn't realize, that that's his fourth carry today for 26, most people didn't realize just how strong Kelvin Bryant is. And when Dick Corey joined us against in the playoff game in Philadelphia, he said that his experience trying to coach against him is that Kelvin Bryant comes hard every play and has surprising power. Bryant is out now. One lone remaining back is Harvin. He will block. They've got three wide receivers. Fusina to pass. Big rush is on. Unloaded in a hurry, and it's incomplete intended for Willie Collier. When Philadelphia saw Bryant come out of the ball game and that third wide receiver come in, they step in there, and boy, they were really coming. Well, you see everybody up in the line of scrimmage. 31, David Greenwood in there again. 98, Allen Hughes, all coming in on the blitz, just putting all the pressure they can on, on Chuck Fusina. Sean Landetta now, standing back at his 10, hits it at the 12, and gets a beauty. Oh, boy, is that a dandy. Carter goes all the way back inside the 25, calls fair catch, and uh, accepts it at the 23. That was a 55-yard high hanger. Ooh. 
field position. A punter can kick you right into good field position, kick you out of bad field position, and give it to your opponent. That time, Sean Landetta did it all. So here comes Michigan from just outside. It's 23. No score in the first quarter, 4.56 to play. The USFL Championship. Hebert hands the ball away to Cleo Miller, and Miller is slowed down and then brought down, and the man coming up to slow him down was Scott Werner, the strong safety. Scott Werner read the play, just came up to turn it back inside. Play bounced to his outside. He grabbed hold of him, but Cleo Miller, using his leg drive, just got away from him, picked up a couple yards. It would have been a loss of about two and if he had been able to hold on to him. Miller in, replacing John Williams, who has a turf toe. John, a big rookie out of Wisconsin that was almost a specialist in short yardage plays for Michigan this year. Gain of about a yard and a half on that carry. Bear gives to Ken Lacey, the big rookie out of Tulsa. And he is a hammer as he goes across the 35. Hello, Antonio Gibson. My name is Ken Lacey. <laughs> Ken Lacey took that ball using his speed to turn the corner in the outside. Antonio Gibson came up for the tackle. Lacey said, I'm not going to run around you. I'm going to give you something. And he just ran right into him, popped his helmet off, and picked up the first down. Two rookies, Lacey from Tulsa and Gibson from Cincinnati. Lacey now 26 yards on four carries. The ball is just over the 35. It is a first down for the Michigan Panthers. Carter and Holloway come to the same side now. The bottom of the picture, that's terrifying for the defensive secondary. And Hebert is going to find one of them. He's going all the way for Carter. And he can't get it. Yeah, he tried to put it up deep. And Anthony Carter was just watching the ball, trying to float in underneath it. Jonathan Sutton was back with him, stride for stride, and had a great opportunity to catch the ball himself. See right there. Now watch Anthony Carter's right hand. See if he just doesn't come right out there. <laughs> little receiver trick, trying to get a little push in there where the official doesn't notice it. But then you see Lush. Lush is a safety, the free safety. He's reading this play. He's got to cover Derek Holloway. He's coming over, but he can't get over there in time to help. Bear is now two out of seven for 29 yards in the ball game. It is second down and 10 for Michigan, just over the 35. Frank McLean comes in now. Anthony Carter goes out after that long run on a hot night. Philadelphia showing him a five-man front as Bear drops on second and 10, swings it out to Lacey, and down he goes. Number 59, John Bunning who came out of North Carolina 12 years ago, played 11 years with Philadelphia Eagles, and he made a big play right there. And with all that experience, you would know that John Bunny would be able to recognize and pick up that screen, but number 91, Buddy Moore, puts on the pressure, forces a pass. Lacey makes a catch in spite of the hot breath of John Bunny coming down his neck. Ball is down just inside the 30 now, where it's third down and almost six behind the original line of scrimmage, which will make it third and 16. Carter is back in. Hebert to throw. Has time. He's got a lot of room to run now, and the penalty flag goes down. And Hebert slides across the midfield stripe to about the Philadelphia 49, but let's see about the penalty. The penalty flag is about the 35-yard line, Keith, and when it was thrown, I didn't see anyone in that area. Might have been some holding back around the quarterback. But Carter's up there. <laughs> Anthony Carter is always around. It is a holding, but it's against the defense. So they'll surely decline that and take the play, which will be first down at midfield. Keith, that was such a big hole, and there's a very specific reason for so much running room for Bobby Abier. He drops back the pass, the speed of Derek holding Holloway. On the defense, number 23, Tony has declined. First down. And Anthony Carter take off flying downfield. The secondary has to drop back to give him room in the cover. He sends all of the backs out of the backfield. They spread everything out. The linebackers, the down linemen are inside. There's nobody in the middle. Bobby Avery wisely recognizes it and takes off. Didn't hesitate on his run. Picks up the first down and drops to the turf so he doesn't get hurt. Balls at midfield. Again, they're showing a six-man front now, but Werner comes out of there in a hurry now to go back and play deep, and Hebert rolls it out. He has Lacey, but he chooses the middle. Mike Knopf 
to Clay Cobb inside the 20, and they've got him at the 13. First down, Michigan at the Philadelphia 13. Mike Cobb. Mike Cobb led his team in receptions coming into this ball game with 61. Whenever you've got the, the deep threat on the outside, the tight end might have a big day coming open. Here he just gets behind the coverage right down the middle, makes the catch, and he's running away from the secondary. They have put him down at the 14. Big guy was a Spartan at Michigan State. And here's your first threat for a score of the ball game. Michigan at the Philadelphia 14. 135 to play in the first quarter. Hebert is going to stay in the air with it. Throws it as he was falling, getting pressure from number 94, the nose guard, Dave Ofer, a rookie out of Penn State, and Frank Case, another Penn Stater who spent a year with the Kansas City Chiefs. And the official blew the whistle. You see Dave Ofer while he was just about falling down, so it will count as a sack. Minus six yards on the play. I imagine Ofer and Case will split it because both of them had a piece of him and the loss is back to the nine, near the 19. Lost almost five. <laughs> They're trying to blitz him. The pass is away, caught by Cleo Miller, and Miller is dropped at the 16. They got three yards on the play, and the blitz caused it. Well, whenever you can blitz, you always run the risk. Jeff Gabrielson making the tackle. Whenever you run a blitz, there's always the risk of a big play, but if you execute it well, you either come up with a sack, or you force the quick pass to the receiver, and you make the play by keeping him within five yards as far as the gain is concerned. It's third down and 12 with 24 seconds to play in the first quarter. He leads the field, he goes for Carter, and it's incomplete. And had it not been for the coverage of Scott Warner, it's six points because Carter worked hard on the ball, but Scott Warner made an equally good play. Oh, Anthony Carter would have come up with a great catch there. Let's take a look at the isolation. He's going one-on-one -on -one against Jonathan Sutton. He misses a bump there, but he rolls inside. Now, Scott Warner will come up right there, making the play for the ball. Anthony just can't hang on to it. Good play by the safety, Scott Warner. 33-yard field goal try coming up now by Novo Bjovic for the first score of the ball game. Whit Taylor, rookie out of Vanderbilt, will hold. 33 yards. Plenty of leg. And the kick is dead center. So with three seconds to play in the first quarter, the young man who was born in Titograd, Yugoslavia, came to this country, went to school at Central Michigan. And it's been verified he was a character there, too. <laughs> well, I know he can take that kick and read about it tomorrow and put that in the scrapbook, scoring the first points in the championship game. You see Bobby Abear taking a little oxygen here at Mile High Stadium. Getting the oxygen into the lungs is going to be a problem. Last time I played in this football field, about the second half, although I felt I was in pretty good shape, I thought it was the beginning of the season all over again. Just couldn't get enough air, both fatigue, and that's going to be a factor in this Michigan team if they continue to go deep so often. Young man you're listening to is Lynn Swan, who played so many years, was a great star at USC with the Pittsburgh Steelers and had the good common sense to retire at an age when he could still run the hundred. <laughs> Here's Tim Brett for a moment. Standing with Irv Eatman on that offensive line, and Irv, they've been throwing a lot of blitzes at you. How do you stop them? Well, we're doing all right. They're getting a little pressure right now. They really haven't hurt us that badly. We basically, basically, is our home mistakes has hurt us so far. But I think if we settle down a little bit, keep executing our game plan, we'll get it done. I saw you having a few words with Ray Bentley, the linebacker. Well, I think it'll be like that the rest of the game. It's an intense game. You know, they got something to say. I definitely got something to say. So I guess it'll be like that the rest of the game. All right, Keith. Irv Eatman, who came out of Dayton, Ohio, went to UCLA as a sophomore, had one of the great defensive games I've ever seen against Ohio State. 
Then they switched him over to offense, and he's happier there and playing there as a pro. The kick goes deep into the end zone, and Harbin will not bring it out. Allen took a look upfield, saw that he had no wedge formed, no point in uh, not coming up short of the 20. So that's where Philadelphia will have the football. Their own 20, and we begin the second quarter of play in just a moment with Michigan leading three to nothing. You see the total yards for Michigan, 109, but that's a bit misleading. A lot of that's come from recapturing the same territory. They've been knocked back a bit, had a couple of penalties they've had to make up for, and it's the foot of Bojovic that's given them the edge so far. Philadelphia from the 20, now with Michigan leading three to nothing. And the handoff to Kelvin Bryant, caught behind the line of scrimmage and thrown down. A little As the Michigan linebackers did not bite on the they, misdirection. They didn't bite. They came in, but it was number 65, David Tipton, that came in, made the play. He was just standing there, and uh, Kelvin Bryant went one way, came right back to him. He reached around and grabbed him. Kelvin almost slipped away from him before he was brought down. Tipton out of Western Illinois, played with the Patriots for three years, up in Hamilton for a year, and was traded by the Chicago Blitz over to the Michigan Panthers early in the season. You've seen it a pass it. Got a problem now, and throws it away. And there's a flag on the penalty, and what, well, rightfully so. Now he's, Chuck Fusina will argue, that he had the receiver there in the area of the ball. He is correct on that note. But what happened when the screen was set up, it was read by the Michigan Panthers. Intentional grounding on the quarterback. Lost it down. Third down. And he went back. He saw it could have been a safety. So then he just threw it away. The official was very smart in as much as he read this play also. Now you watch where the ball is. There's nobody in a red shirt over there. That's right. There is a back in the area, but he's much farther and in, further inside. Chuck Fusina, however, did the right thing. <laughs> he didn't have little choice in the situation. Preservation of oneself. And saving two points. 35, uh, 25 uh, yards away now from their first down. On third down, third and 25. The ball is at the five. Out of the end zone. Got to run it. Get some help from Kelvin Bryant. Bryant took on John Corker. And you know who went down? <laughs> John Corker. <laughs> you know. You've seen a tiptoed out of bounds up near the seven. That brings up fourth down. Now watch this. John Corker coming up, faking the blitz. He's 57. He's just reading the play, playing his own. Don't want to give up all the ground. Now he sees Fusina coming out of the backfield right there. <laughs> Kelvin Bryant just waited for him. Dropped his butt down, got his knees down, and... Laid one on them. From the end zone now, Landetta, who has punted 61, 43, and 55. He needs a big one here. They're coming. He gets it out. Fair kick. Not a great one. Carter, fair catch back at midfield. A 44-yard punt by Sean Landetta, deep out of his end zone. And so here's Michigan now, right in the middle of the field, leading three to nothing. The Michigan Panthers, who ruled through the last part of the season, winning 11 of the last 13 in regular season play to win the Central Division. And, uh, Philadelphia, that had some great moments this year, the best record in the league, led by that man, Kelvin Bryant. But their comeback to beat uh, Chicago and Philadelphia was absolutely incredible. Overtime ball game. They were down by 21 points with 12.04 to play. John Williams is now in the backfield, and the tight end, Mike Cobb, goes, no, that's Eccles, in motion, number 88, John Eccles. Ball is given to John Williams, and a penalty flag is thrown as Williams cuts it upfield for about eight yards. That's in the area where that holding is usually called. 23, Antonio Gibson is clapping his hand. 98, Alan Hughes is pointing towards Michigan, and the official verifies. Sean Landetta out of Towson State. Here are a couple of Maryland boys, Tim Brandt and Sean. Keith, now that the sun is dropping behind the stadium, it's really cooling off down here on the field. Sean Dent Landetta, of course, is happy about the thin air up here, and it does help the punters, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does, Keith. The ball seems to hang much longer and travel farther when you hit it good. Problem with the last one at all? 
Well, I tried to rush a little bit. I saw I had so much yardage in front of me, I tried to kill it. So uh, it was a good pump, but I have to not rush it so much. Okay, Keith. Give him a business card, Tim. <laughs> hey, Keith, I thought you were up here. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to make that mistake. He's a good-looking youngster, though, isn't he? He's a fine putter. Yep. Ball is back now on the 45 after the penalty. Aver sets up on first and 15. Williams was not looking for the ball. John drifting out of the backfield and across the middle. And just simply didn't expect him, Hebert, to throw him the ball. <laughs> yeah, he had a little unexpected company down there, too. Uh, Gary Hart, number 66, that uh, was down there. And uh, he's the umpire. Just uh, probably had John Williams looking at him instead of the ball. Thirteen forty-seven to go in the first half of play. A 3-0 ball game. Michigan has gone for the big one two or three times already with Carter and Holloway. On second and 15, they might do it again. A bear back. He's looking for the long man. Goes short instead, and Big Mike Cobb. And they say he dropped it. On. He jumped up in the air, caught the football, and on the way down, it just popped out, and the official was in the right position to make the call. 25 is going to make the tackle on him. Scott Warner. That's Scott Warner. It's Mike Cobb. Comes down. Bobby Aber is looking in. He's got a lot of pressure. He gets the ball away. Now watch Cobb. He'll go up, make the catch. Warner grabs him around his ankles, and just as he hits the ground, the ball squirts loose. Normally, you'll find the strong safety lining up and playing against the tight end. And he's playing against a big tight end right Wooden, now. I'll say 6'5", 255. Cleo Miller is back now. Williams is out. A Bears 5 out of 13 for 62 yards. On third and 15, no pressure. His pass is away for Carter, and he's got it. And a first down at the Philadelphia 34. Bobby Abair, Anthony Carter. Bobby Abair, he's got the arm, he's a young lion leading this football team. Made the play. They're playing a zone defense. Bobby Abair just drops back, gets plenty of time. He's got the great confidence in his offensive line. Just zips that ball right downfield. Look at the people around Anthony Carter. He still concentrates. Roger Jackson, 24. Mike Lush, 27. Antonio Gibson, 23, and it's a big first down for this Michigan team as they have to fight their way back from a penalty. Panthers, scoring area now. Frank McLean is in, number 82, at a wide spot. Two tight ends, Bear looks at the defense, doesn't like it, calls a timeout. 12 minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first half, and with the opportunity at hand, first down on the Philadelphia 34, didn't want to mess it up. So he called timeout, he'll go over and talk to the coach. We'll be right back. Good Bobby Hebert has had his talk on the sidelines and Jim Mora there wearing the headset concerned that his defensive alignment and his people on the field have not been able to shut down the Hebert to Carter connection so far. But then few people have this year. That's right, Dan. It's, it's going to be tough to come close to it today. On first down, they send Eccles tight end in motion. Bear gives the ball to Cleo Miller, and he's got the move. Close to a first down. He got a good block by number 61, Tyrone McGriff on John Bunting. To get out of the backfield, as we take a look from ground level, Don't's right there. Got Tyrone McGriff too. just cuts him right down. You see, you see Scott Warner. Dancing with Mike Cobb as Cleo Miller turns a the corner, then challenges Mike Lush one on one. Penalty's going to wipe that out. Come back to the 34. Tyrone's got his arms wide open. Dornbrook, his arms wide open. They can't understand what the penalty is being. Five wide yards. Open. Bill Parkinson will tell you. Illegal formation. Number 74 on the end of the line. Did not report. Well, they uncovered the tackle now. Penny was on, Ray Penny was uncovered as the tight end was flexed back. He did, that made the tight end eligible, and, and he didn't report. And so number 70 is not an eligible receiver's number. That's and right. the ball players, with the exception of one or two players on each team, like Holloway 29, Carter being number one, have to wear a number according to position. Supposedly, it helps the linemen or the officials identify players in various parts of the field. Penny did not notify the official that he was going to be an eligible receiver. First down and 15 as the ball comes back to the 39 of Michigan. Bears back. He's looking at Miller. He's going to be sacked. 
Brought down from behind by number 53, John Brooks, out of Clemson. Well, Bob, Bobby Hebert had time, or so he thought he had enough time. And he was drifting to his right, trying to let things develop, trying to buy time for the I, receivers to I get I think open. he was waiting for Miller to break free because it looked like Cleo might get loose in the corner. Well, he's just looking downfield, and right there, Brooks just comes in from behind. Now, he had enough time. That's good blocking by his offensive line. But Brooks just kept coming, was able to slip off, and he came all the way across from the other side of the field to make the tackle. Sack is back to the 43, so it's second down and 19. Hey, there to the sidelines. Carter dropped it. Once again, that's the second time in the ball game that Anthony Carter was looking to see where the defender was and try to figure out where he was going to run. And uh, as a result, he didn't catch the ball. Just took his eye off the ball. He's running the pattern, using his speed, driving the defensive back off deep. Now trying to get all of it back at one time. It's a good little out route. Right there. Now watch when he turns his head. The ball's there, and his head is already turned before he actually has completed the catch. Anthony Carter, I'm sure, is not happy with himself. He's making the kind of mistakes uh, that well, we're making. He's trying to force the play, uh, Swanee. He's trying to get more out of it. He's looking where to run. Well, he's just trying to live up to his big play reputation. Yeah, he's trying to make true. the big play. We all want to. Werner, free safety, a strong safety, comes up onto the line of scrimmage trying to blitz him. They get the blitz on. He's going to run away from it. Gets his pass off, and it is intercepted by Mike Lush. And Lush puts a hit on Bear. They pop helmets, and Mike Lush comes all the way back to the Michigan 44. Bobby Bear made the tackle, then got help from number 61, Tyrone McGriff. And an official is on the play. He's calling a penalty, roughing the passer, which may give the ball back to the Michigan Panthers. And Mike Lush is shook up on the field. Boy, is that a tough call. That was a real tough call. Let's take a look first at Scott Warner, number 25. He's coming up from the defensive backfield to the line of scrimmage. Standing there, making a bear think. Change his call, then he comes in on the blitz. 57, Gabrielson behind him. That's number 56, George Cooper. A bear eludes. He gets around him. Gabrielson coming after him. He gets the ball away. Right there, he's hit. It was a pass that did not have any power on it. The receiver was not coming back to the ball. Big Mike Cobb. Mike Lush played it well. Roughing the passer. First down. And it all goes for not. I want to see the roughing. roughing the passer. I want to see it because that linebacker was coming so hard. I don't know how in the world he could stop. Now, it just depends on what he did. That's Gaberson right there. That's not roughing the passer. I would have been hard-pressed to call that roughing the passer. Hard-pressed my foot. <laughs> how you, are you going to stop in midair? And you see on the sideline, no one, no one is in agreement with the official. I don't agree with him, I'll tell you that. And I don't care who wins the ball game, but that one was ridiculous. Well, you know, it was Steve Spurry and a few other coaches throughout the year that wanted to have the quarterbacks protected more, and this is the results. 28-yard line. Cleo Miller, big hole for Cleo. Fumbles the football. Lush has got it back. Well, Mike Lush missed on the last one because of the penalty, but uh, this time he does get it, and we've got another penalty flag thrown. Got some tempers going down there now. Well, we got people who are upset, obviously, by the last call. That time on the sideline after the player was going down, there were several players who were coming over the top trying to get in the hit. Trying to make a block. Line judge Larry Hill made that call, and it's a personal foul against Michigan. So maybe that will assuage the Philadelphia temper over the last call. Let's take a look at the fumble. Cleo Miller gets the handoff. Turn, turns to the field. See right there, a good block by Tom Dornbrook. Turns it right up. Personal foul. foul. The number 23, Antonio Gibson. First down. Antonio Gibson. He just reached in and stripped it away, and Mike Lush comes up with the ball. And now Philadelphia is out to its 38. Penalties now, five for Michigan for 40, and three for Philadelphia, 38. You've seen it to throw it. Throws a swing pass out to Alan Harvin, and Harvin is run out of bounds, short of the line of scrimmage. He moved it up to the 47. 
Mike Lush. He intercepted one, had it called back, and took a pretty good pop from Bear and from Tyrone McGriff. Then picks up the fumble to get his, trying to get his ball caught back into this game. Michigan leading by a score of 3-0 on a Bojovic field goal of 33 yards. Right now, no one's over Scott Fitzgerald. He's waiting. Right, he's uncovered at the bottom of the picture, but they go the other way to Kelvin Bryant. He's got the first down and then some as he crosses the 45 down near the 44. Ray Bentley made the tackle. Uh, number 50 came in, made the play. Good thing you tripped him up because Kelvin might have been gone. Just takes the ball, gets a good block right there by Booker Russell. He turns it upfield, straight arms a player, but he's tripped up. And he's down. Collier comes to the bottom of the picture. Pitsky to the top. On first down, Philadelphia at the Michigan 44. Bryant running in traffic down to about the 41. And he had big number 76, John Banizak, holding onto his hip pocket as he went by. John Banizak getting new life, a chance to continue playing football. Played in Pittsburgh, studying in 1975, and is the owner of three Super Bowl rings and told me before the game that... Uh, he wants to win this ball game to make it an even four to catch up with the rest of his old teammates. Second down. Call it seven and a half. Pennywell directing traffic defensively for Michigan. You've seen a back to throw it. Pressure's on him. He gets it off short over the middle. Harvard is open. Greenwood saves it. The ball goes out of bounds, and Philadelphia keeps it. And that's a great play by David Greenwood. Greenwood is 6'3", 210 pounds, a rookie out of Wisconsin, and he is a hitter. And that was a great demonstration of it. Chuck Ficina took a long time at the line of scrimmage. Reading the defense, he saw Blitz, read it all the way, had enough time on the shot, on the uh, clock, to, on the 30-second clock, to audible at the line of scrimmage. He made the audible, his lineman picking up the Blitz. You see Corker at the bottom coming in. He's picked up. They give him enough time. And then Harvin just slips away from his coverage. And right there, Greenwood with the right hand just whips it around his shoulder, knocks the ball Harvin loose. Harvin didn't have it put away either. He had it sort of floating around out there along the local draft. You see that back to throw it. Runs away from Banizak. Goes deep into the end zone. It's incomplete. And that's a great play by Clarence Chapman. Excellent play by Clarence. Pitsky, the intended receiver. He was with Pitsky stride for stride. Pitsky looking back for the ball. Chapman concentrating on the receiver, and just at the last moment, he turned around and got a hand in on the play. Chuck Ficina doing a good job with his quick feet getting away. Let's take a look at Pitsky. He comes off, gives him a little fake inside to get him turned. He has to do that because he doesn't have the, block, the foot speed naturally to do it. Right there, he had a chance, but Chapman gets a hand in, knocks it away. Well, first time Philadelphia had gone for the big one. That's right. They're getting, again, more man-to-man -man coverage. Ball is on the 29 of Michigan. You've seen it back. Again goes the other way, and it is cut down. Caught by Rodney Parker. Fifty-nine yards on the play. But on the field, there seems to be some confusion. And they bring in the ball back to line of scrimmage. Let's take a, a look at touchdown. Rodney Parker. He goes inside. It's a classic flag route. He's got Oliver Davis underneath. Just bursts away from him when he sees the ball. Maybe he's out of bounds. And right there, he makes the catch. Oh, Didn't the ball pops the ball. loose there. So they call it an incomplete pass. The official's arms went up signaling touchdown in the corner. He didn't see it until the ball rolled away. And so it is an incomplete forward pass. <laughs> Third and ten, Fusina, hit by Corker, gets his pass away, penalty flag is down, the pass is complete to Scott Pitsky, short John, of the first down. John Corker just a hand grip away from getting a sack in his ball game, and that's Bart Oates, number 50 signaling, it's against Michigan. It'll be a first down. John Corker led the USFL in sacks with 28. They have thus dubbed him Sack Man. He comes up right there the, around the top. He just couldn't grab him. Just his hand slipped off the shoulder pads of Fusina, and he was allowed to throw the ball. Holding, 
Number 21 on the defense. First down. Oliver Davis. So Philadelphia gets the first down at the Michigan 23 now. And the Michigan defense starting to get ornery again. And when they get ornery, the Michigan, you better call for help. Mistakes. <laughs> they get more physical, but they continue to make mistakes. Parker had a ball for a touchdown. Fischel called it, but the ball rolled away from him. And they lost it. And Fusina on first down. Bootlegs it out. Gets the pass off. And the pass is incomplete. T. Folsom, the tight end, went down. The pass was short as Fusina bootlegged it to his left and tried to throw it right-handed. And he didn't get a lot on it. And that's going to Tim Brandt now with Mike Lush. Thanks, Keith. Mike Lush, of course, involved in those two turnovers, one nullified. And your partner, Scott Warner, of course, was on a blitz one time, so he didn't have much help. But it had to make a difference. Well, it did make a difference. Many times, you know, we have a lot of good pressure. He'll put the ball in the air, and it's just up to us to react to the ball. That's what happened on that particular play. We, we forced him outside. He threw the ball up, and I was luckily there to get it. Okay, let's go back and watch the offense. 9.44 to play in the first half. Second down and 10 for Philadelphia. Michigan 24. They hand the ball to Allen Harvin. Harvin runs out of one tackler and gets the first down or very close to it. We'll see where they threw him out. John Arno. A rookie out of Iowa State came out of the defensive secondary and made a solid hit on him. Bring the ball to the outside, number 50, Ray Bentley, inside linebacker, rookie from Central Michigan, had a shot, just couldn't get there in time. Alan Harvin turned the corner on him, and picking up the first down. Jim Stanley now a little concerned about his defense. They're playing physical football, but they're making mistakes. And I don't think they're executing the strategy is the way he wants to do it. Third down in a yard, Rodenberger, a third running back, a reserve fullback is in. He caught a touchdown against Chicago last Saturday. He's in to block Kelvin Bryant. Storms over the right side and has it. Uh, first down for Philadelphia right around the Michigan 12. Kelvin Bryant not happy right now, having some words with Greenwood. That's unusual. Irv Eaton comes Bryant. up and says, come on out of there now. I'm, I'll do the fight. And you He's do the running. He's returning the favor against Chicago. It was Kelvin Bryant that pulled him away. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, these two teams are made up of people who are competitors. Competitors, and you talk about drafting players with character. Well, yep. Both these teams have, are late with character. Exactly right. Double wide, bottom of the picture, on first down from the 12. That's Fitzky in motion. You see the fumble to snap. And the Panthers were all over him. He'll lose a yard, probably. The official comes in. He's right on top of it, signaling that Philadelphia still maintains possession. So everyone, get on up. Don't try and take it away from them. It's funny, I've never seen anybody... I don't think at any level it played three quarters of worse football than Fusina did last week and then wind up a hero. He did, but what what happened just there, kid? You, meant, you mentioned it last week in the game. Chuck Fusina didn't have his hands together when he took the snap. Right. The ball went right between his hands. It is second down. And it's about 12 near the 14. And timeout, Philadelphia. Timeout? Philadelphia. That's their second timeout. Get away. Three seconds. One left. 8.15 to go. Three seconds were on the 30-second clock, and Chuck Fusina was reading the defense. Couldn't exactly figure out what he was facing, so he used us up another timeout. So they say field position in this scoring drive. Second down and 12 from the 14. Michigan shuffling its defense. Bentley, the linebacker, steps up, now drops off. Fusina back to throw. Gets it off to the corner for Fitzky. No. Incomplete. Out and again, it's Merritt Chapman doing a good job for the Michigan Panthers. And it was John Corker again coming in from his linebacker position, putting pressure on Chuck Ficina. Clarence Chapman was in the right position. Scott Fitzky went up to make a good grab, but he was out of the end zone. Parker comes out, who had the almost touchdown. Only a 3-0 ball game. David Trout warming up on the sidelines in case he gets a call. Third down and 12, Philadelphia. Yusina gets away. His pass is incomplete. A 
Oh, Again, good. he's tried to get it down in the area of Clarence Chapman, and that time he sent Willie Collier, and Clarence whipped him too. Clarence Chapman doing a great job playing the receivers man for man, keeping good position, getting a hand in. Chuck Ficina, quick for the quarterback, however little all-out speed he might have. Uh, scrambled away from pressure, got the ball away. It was a good pass. Dave Trout is in now to try a 30-yard field goal. He's 11 out of 15 on the season from 30 yards. Bojovic hit a 33-yarder for Michigan's three points. The snap is good. The hold is good. Trout's kick is good. He hooked it a little bit, but it got inside. And at 7-18, play in the second quarter, the Philadelphia Stars get on the scoreboard. But the Michigan defense sure did make it hard. It's 3-3. 7-18 to go in the second quarter. 3-3 ball game. Trout will kick off deep for Michigan. Lonel Fee and Jerome Stelly. 86 and 81 respectively. Fee the principal. The men the Panthers like to return it. They use Carter on punts, but Fee on kickoffs. Trout's kick is a floater. It's touched. Better down it and cover it, guys. Let's see how the official calls this. Will he say the impetus of the ball carried it in? Yep. Yes, he does. Going to bring it out to the 20. Jonathan Sutton arguing about it, that it was not the impetus of the ball. Number 20, Mark McCants, their hot man on coverage. Okay. I would not like to be wearing a striped shirt down there tonight. Because there are <laughs> too, too many cameras, too many eyes, and, and a lot of vigor. Well, Mr. Jackson, would you like to be wearing a striped shirt anytime? No. no. <laughs> Tough job. All right, the Michigan Panthers will come out for the first down on the 20. In their play selection so far, they've run 23. They've thrown it 15 times. They've run it eight times. Joe William, uh, John Williams is kind of hobbled up with a sore foot. Which may be one of those reasons they've thrown it so much more. Oh, Cleo Miller. Moves too soon. So far, Keith, uh, it's been the mistakes created by yep. Michigan for themselves that have put them in the hole every time they've had the football. Illegal motion on the offense caused the contact on the defense. First down. Hey, if Michigan had, at this point, had, didn't have a mistake, they would have two touchdowns probably. Very possible. Very possible. Rodney Parker now with Tim Brent. Controversial calls, Keith, as you well know. One of them, Rodney Parker, was signaled having a touchdown. Did you think you were in? I thought I was, uh, it looked good to me when I hit the ground, the ball just got away, but I thought I was in for a touch. Okay, back up to you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. 15-yard line. Ken Lacey buried right at the line of scrimmage. Well, the <laughs> Don Fielder out of Kentucky made the tackle. <laughs> I can't help it. Don Fielder out of Kentucky. <laughs> We're up here getting a good chuckle, huh? Our sideline commentator, Tim Brant, has been called Keith twice now. and uh, Somebody get him a name tag, will you? <laughs> Second down. No, not me about that. 15. Michigan at their own 15-yard line. Lush comes up. Shows blitz and then goes. And a whistle stops. 30-second clock. Ran run down. Well, obviously, Bobby Hebert was checking off. Number 11 on the offense. First and down. he just simply forgot to look at the clock. That's right. Bobby Hebert, a rookie quarterback. Last time these two teams met, had a big problem picking up the blitz. The offensive line had a problem picking up the blitz. The blitz. Michigan Bobby mistakes. Hebert. Now, Len Lenny, are, uh, they've been penalized eight times for 55 yards. They've had two sacks for a minus 11 and turned it over one. Ah, uh, that's right. You see Lush, number 27. He comes up, he's just jumping around, starts to go back, now he comes up. Bobby Hebert doesn't know exactly what he's going to do, takes too much time at the line of scrimmage. So go it's back. second down and 20 at the 10. As all day, gets it off. And that one's incomplete. Cleo Miller was close enough, I guess, 
for them not to throw a flag. <laughs> but uh, that time, Antonio Gibson came in from his corner position as if he was going to blitz, then stopped and picked up the back coming out of the backfield. And then Gabrielson, number 57, he goes in. He goes in because Antonio Gibson is picking up his man, and he just shoves Ken Lacey out of the way, trying to put pressure. He goes, up. Well, well, remember June 5, when Philadelphia beat Michigan 29-20, they did this, this whole second half. Uh, Vince Tobin sent everybody, including the Cook, and uh, they held Michigan to six points in the second half. So they're trying to affect that same kind of confusion again on third down and 20. Hebert's pass is away for Carter. He's got it. But it's a catch. Yes. Excellent catch on the sideline by the young receiver. And Scott Warner is over on the sideline, and the tempers are hot again. Well, that's worth seeing again, because I saw Anthony bump him. But this is a great pass by Abair. He's got a lot of time, good protection. Ball gets away. Now watch the footwork of Anthony Carter. Makes a catch. Taps in. Oh, but it oh, was don't close. Know about that. <laughs> it was close. There's an official just behind Anthony Carter. Downfield about, oh, maybe about 10. You see the official right there. So he's in good position to make the call. At this moment, he should be looking right at his feet. And he is. But he is out of bounds. Whoa. Just by half step. Half it's first inch. down Michigan. All things even out. 37-yard line. <laughs> Ball goes to Ken Lacey. Big guy runs up the middle and moves from the 37 to about the 44. Got a lot out of that. Well, he got hit at about the 40 yard line and picked up a few passengers, took him for a ride down to about the 44. Some tough running by Ken Lacey. 5.45 to play in the first half. Bobby Ebear checking his plays. 3 3 ball game. 33 yarder by Jovic. 30-yarder by Trout. If you had something like that in the classroom, the, your plays or the answers in the arm, they call it the cheat sheet. That's what he calls it, I think. <laughs> there goes Lacey again. And uh, Lacey is close to his first down. You're getting an extra lick now on every play. You know that yeah. somebody's whacking somebody on every play. He picks up the first down. When tempers, get, when tempers flare up like they have been so far in this ball game, between receivers and the defensive back, very often it's a running back carrying the ball. <laughs> it's going to suffer a few extra licks. There's the time remaining in the first half. First down for Michigan at their own 48-yard line. The Michigan team has to settle down and execute, play better football. Cobb and Eccles, a pair of tight ends, are in there. Carter is the lone white man. Werner drops back to play center field. Hebert is getting a little pressure now, gets his pass away, and the pass is complete to Carter for a first down as Anthony had gone deep and come all the way back to the ball. He returned a good 10 yards. Most coaches, Keith, coach a wide receiver, say never run to be covered. Now he's got one route he's supposed to run, looks back, and he'll see Bobby Hebert start to scramble. Well, why run away from him? Just come back and give him some help. He just comes back, gets in an open hole, makes a catch, First down for the Michigan Panthers. AC is now caught four for 76 yards. And the ball is at the Philadelphia 41. First down, Michigan. John Williams in the game for the second time with four minutes to play in the first half. A Bears pass is incomplete. And that'll be pass interference on Jonathan Sutton, number 26. Jonathan, number 26, just misjudged when that ball was going to get there. He's upset with himself. He knows he hit him before the ball got there. He came in. He's back deep. He wasn't going to go for the interception. All he wanted to do was go for the hit. On 89, Mike Cobb. You see Cobb concentrating the ball right there. Ball's a good three feet away, and he makes the hit. George Cooper, number 56, was a linebacker who was underneath that play, had good coverage. Anthony Carter. Defense is passing the first. Number 26. First down. Hobbled off the field. They're treating his leg. Suddenly it was uh, Michigan making all the mistakes, and now it's Philadelphia making defensive mistakes, and Michigan profiting from it. First down at the Philadelphia 26. 3-3 ball game. Ken Lacey. 
to the 20. Ken Lacey running behind the blocking of Tyrone McGriff. Pulling out there. Big number 70, Chris Godfrey. Just turning it up inside, trying to get as much yards as he can. As many yards as he can. Carter's back, having rubbed the bruise off. Radloff has left the field, the center, and Matt Braswell. They're both from Georgia. Braswell is in snapping now. Lacey hit behind the line of scrimmage by number 59, John Bunting, and he's dropped at the 25. That time for Bunting, it was just a matter of reading the play, using his experience. See him right there, 59, on the outside. He just jumps over John Williams to make the play. Slashing in from his outside linebacker position. John Williams knows better than really to try and cut someone like that. He's got to stay underneath them. When you've got that running back who's a little bit farther behind you, you've got to stay underneath that linebacker, pop him right in the chest, and drive him back. Third down and nine from the 25 of Philadelphia. Werner comes up and shows blitz. Now he drops off. Bear retreating, looks for Carter, goes for Carter, and he's got it. And he's going to... No, he's out of bounds. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds. Anthony Carter. He but he's got a first down. He's got a first down. He's got a lot of heart. How did he catch it? I thought he was pretty well look. covered. Let's watch AC, Anthony Carter. Number one pick out of Michigan. A simple out route. Antonio Gibson, 23. That was Roger Jackson. Came over the top. 23 yards on the on the play. Tried to knock the ball away, but he didn't. And look at Anthony Carter try and take on number 27, Mike Lush. They marked the ball back at about the 10 yard at the 12 yard but he line. He stepped out at the 12. Just at the 12 yard line, saying he stepped out of bounds there. Michigan has called timeout now. Bobby Abear wanting to check everything. They have one remaining. You have two minutes and 20 seconds to play in the uh, first half. Now, when they come to the two-minute mark, the clock will stop. And, of course, in the last two minutes of each half, the clock stops with a change of move. Let's listen. <laughs> Well, getting the play from Jim Stanley, he's checking it against the list he has on his wrist. I think that's a key timeout, Keith. Yep, Not I just in terms of getting a little rest, but in terms of settling the offense down. They've come down the field. There's been some penalties. Kempers is flaring up. What they want to do right now is forget about who's trying to make the extra hit. Forget about the mistakes. Just concentrate and execute and come away with seven points in the last two minutes of this ballgame. By calling time here, they're going to get another time to talk at the two-minute mark. So, in effect, they have two timeouts remaining, though... One of them is the two-minute warning. Holloway is back in. He's had an upset stomach, but he's back in the ball game now. That's Carter in motion. Holloway's wide open. Little Derek Holloway scooted in, shook loose. It was a rollout play. He's looking for his receivers. Number 25, Scott Warner. 27, Mike Lush. They're adjusting their defense, trying to figure out what's going on. They see him roll out. Now watch him. He's covered here, but they keep rolling out towards the sideline. Ray Bear is rolling out right past Derek Holloway, and he sits there in the hole until he's open. So the Panthers put a touchdown on the scoreboard, and Bajovic for the extra point. It is good. And now with 2-11 to play, the Panthers jump out to a 10-3 lead. 
There's the only touchdown took catcher nine, right there. Huh? He only took him nine seconds, Keith, to get seven points. Again, they're rolling out. Everybody on the defense of the Philadelphia Stars, good pressure on Bear. just continues to roll, and they roll right past Derek Holloway. This ball floating in the air, not a lot on it, but that's how wide open Derek Holloway was. The ball could just float, take its time, and get there. No one else but Derek Holloway was close. It helps to be six foot four, 210 pounds, and be pretty quick, and have a big, strong arm, which uh, Abair has. And he certainly does, but even on that play, Keith, it, uh, it just wasn't much on it. Just wide open. Let's take a look at the linebackers and see how they play it. Sam Mills, 54. They're reading it, dropping back. All of them are sliding towards the sideline. And look at them, just waving. Here I am. And so it's 10-3. Michigan as Bojovic loads it up to kick it off from the 35 as Michigan goes uh, 80 yards, 10 plays, using a little over five minutes to do it. And whereas they had been doing nothing earlier in this quarter but make mistakes and prevent them from scoring, from getting in scoring position, suddenly they got it all together. And Philadelphia made a couple of mistakes. Bojovic kick high, very high to Harvin. A yard deep in the end zone. Brings it to the 22. Here's the man, the little man from Arkansas, Derek Holloway with Tim Brandt. Keith, most of the time when a quarterback is scrambling like that, the receiver will skate with him. You went the opposite way. Yes, I did. I saw the flow going toward the right. So I decided to just step back and go to the right, you know, going my way. And I was hoping Bobby would see me. I was waving my hand, hoping he would see me. What kind of coverage was it? Um, it was just, a two, um, I think, a two-zone coverage. So when the zone went that way, you just found yourself open? Yes, I did. Okay, Keith. Two minutes to play in the first half. Timeout is called. Michigan leading Philadelphia 10-3. Philadelphia will have the ball at their own 22 when we come back. Well, that was Derek Holloway's first catch of the day. And a big catch it was. You see the difference in passing yardage. However, Michigan would need all that passing yardage had they not had the eight penalties for 55 yards. Right. Yusina in now, goes to work from his 22. Two wide people at the top, one at the bottom. Give it to Kelvin Bryant on a sweep. And Bryant runs it up for five. Where Ronnie Padgett out of Louisiana Tech played a year at Calgary with the Stampeders. Ronnie Padgett did a good job that time. He just followed the flow. Had about three people out, three people out in front of him. Watch him here, he's at the top of the screen. He hits. Irv Eatman, and watch, he just splits, splits the people right there, then just follows the running back till he reaches him. Incomplete intended for Alan Harvin. Alan Harvin last week made several big catches like that to keep his team offense Could've driving down the field. Could have caught that. Oh, that one was catchable easily, he just, he missed it. He just missed it. Young man Harvin there, Allen, one time couldn't walk. He's in Cincinnati, had an injury to his knees, was in a wheelchair for some time until they healed up. Then he had to go through a great deal of therapy. Third down and five from the 27th. Oh, oh, oh. Rush is on. Parker got it. A sack man. He played his college ball at Oklahoma State under Jim Stanley. He was drafted by the Houston Oilers. Had some problems down there. Didn't really get an opportunity to play. One of those ball players to change leagues. Right now, he's playing the best football of his life. As he drops Chuck Fusina to the turf. Sean Landetta comes in. Fifth part of the game. Average, just a little less than 51 yards per punt. That's not too bad either. Anthony Carter fumbles it, picks it up, got a good bounce, and runs into the red shirts up around the 37. Big break for Anthony Carter and the Michigan team, but there's a penalty flag on the play, back at the line of scrimmage. That was a 53-yard punt and an 8-yard return. Holding on the receiving team, post-possession foul. Post-possession foul. So Michigan will keep the ball, but lose the yardage on the penalty. 
Oh, it's better than having it be a pre-possession foul, which would have given the ball right back to the Philadelphia Stars. Interesting halftime coming up for you as Lynn Swan talks about the players that he's watched this year in the USFL. I'll be visiting with Sid Gilman, who's going to become the general manager of one more, he says, football team, the Oklahoma Outlaws, playing in Tulsa next year. Sid Gilman, my goodness, he has... He's helped build. He worked with the Rams. He worked with the Chargers, Dallas, Houston, Bears, Eagles. It's quite a list. <laughs> well, that's how well he's respected. What happened to Pittsburgh? Didn't make a stop there along the way. <laughs> number 74, first down. Ray Penny was the man caught holding. The ball goes back to the 18-yard line where the Michigan Panthers leading 10 to 3 with 109 to play in the first half. Ray Penny's a sneaky offensive lineman. <laughs> Well, yeah, now he's a lot bigger than you are. Ah, uh, yeah, but he's got a long way to catch me up here. <laughs> Lacey, the lone remaining back for Michigan, double wide, top and bottom of the picture. A bear drop, good protection. His pass for McLean is good. He drilled it right into Frank McLean in the first down, up at the 37. And a Philadelphia man is shaken up on the play. The clock stops now as the chains are moved. I like the attitude of this Michigan team. They've got a lead with a minute and two left in the first half. They're not just going to sit on the ball. They're going to try and go for it. The big play. McLean making a good catch. Three-year veteran of the North Texas State. Antonio Gibson is the man shaken up on the play. The time is called on his behalf. Let's check in with Tim Brandt right now. The first game, John Corker, you had some problem with the blitz. The entire Michigan team did against Philadelphia. Tonight, it looks like you're coming free. You're not having those problems. Well, like I said, it just took a little bit more concentration, a little bit more harder studying, understanding of what they're going to be hitting us with. And now we got it all down. We should have a little bit more pressure on them tonight. The motion and everything's not throwing you off. No, nothing going to throw us off tonight, baby. This is for all we work for right here tonight. Keith? One-handed, he did it. Yes, all he worked for, he's uh, talking about the championship the rings, the trophy, and their share of the championship money, which is for the winner in this ball game, the winning team of this ball game will receive $6,000. Minimum. Minimum. Could be more. The losing team will receive a minimum of $3,000, and it's based partially on attendance. In the previous playoff game, the split was $3,000 for the winner and $1,500 for the loser, so the winning team here will receive a check. The players will receive a check each for $9,000. But that won't mean half as much as the ring that they'll get to keep for a much longer time. Time remaining, first half. Ball is just short of the 37 for Michigan. Carter's in, McLean is out. All the way to the top of the screen as they come up. Hey, there's statistics improving dramatically in the second quarter. for Holloway and hits it. First down. Got him right in front of Jonathan Sutton at midfield and Abair has now hit six in a row. 54 seconds to play in the first half. Bobby Abair directing his team well. Not going for all of it at one time. Getting his receivers downfield in between these open zones. And that's what they're facing. Zone defense. Deep drops by the safeties. This time he looks for Carter and hits him. 35 and just barely dragged down by Mike Lush out of East Stroudsburg. Oh, that was a touchdown saving tackle by Mike Lush. Anthony Carter came in on the quick slant, was wide open quickly, raised his hand. Bobby Eber didn't see him right away, but found him a step or two later for the catch. Clock stopped at 45 seconds until the change is set. Now a little swing pass and Eber threw it poorly. And that was pretty close to being a lateral. Very close to being a lateral. I think he really just wanted to stop the clock. And the officials are yelling. The, uh, the coaches for the Philadelphia team are just yelling across the field. We're second down. No. <laughs> no Philadelphia people went after it. Cover the ball! And there's the word from the sideline, cover the ball. That's pretty close to a lateral. Pretty close. 40 seconds to play. Right on the Philly, 35. I think right now... It's, it's obvious you got to put some pressure on Aber. They may take a chance on blitz, but look for Aber to go deep and try and get it all right here. We're 
under the blitzer comes up. A bear saw him coming, checks off. Now it's a deep drop. He goes short from the play and it's almost intercepted. Almost intercepted. The ball was underthrown and Sutton almost stole it. Almost stole it. Bobby Ebert checked off. Only had about four seconds left on the 30 second clock. Saw Scott Warner coming up to the line of scrimmage. It's Frank McLean is driving off the quick out, five yards, breaking it to the outside. He drifted for three more. <laughs> there you see, great chance to set to pick it off. Just couldn't hang on to it. See the defense lining up. That's the blitz. Scott Warner at the top of your screen, 25. Back to live now from the 35, third down and 10. Again, it's Warner throwing blitz. They get it. Number 56 from the outside, George Cooper out of Michigan State. Now, Bobby Abair was lucky just to be able to hold on to this ball. He was trying to get it away, had no one to throw it to. With his hands in the air, number 56, George Cooper comes in. That's his third, that's the third sack. And just lays him right down. Timeout is called by Michigan with 32 seconds to play in the half. Scott Warner running up to the line of scrimmage, standing in between the defensive linemen, making play calls. He goes inside, Gabrielson comes outside. And then it was George Cooper, the outside linebacker, just looped around from the quarterback's right in to make the sack with 32 seconds on the clock. Bajovic is on the field with a tee. They use a one-inch tee in the USFL. He is going to try a 58-yard field goal. His longest of the year was 49 yards, but this is Denver, the Mile High City. Yep. And as Sean Lindella, the punter, was telling Tim Brandt on the sideline, the ball carries in this air. Still does not decrease the difficulty of a 58-yard field goal. No. <laughs> None whatsoever. Longest of the year in the USFL was a 57-yarder by Jim Asmus of Arizona against Los Angeles back on the 19th of March. Right so now, Novo is trying to buy a piece of the record book. Right now, Novo is just doesn't want any distractions. He feels the pressure. He knows he has to concentrate to make this one work. It is blocked by Scott Werner, the veteran out of Georgia. Well, of all the things that could have happened, that was one of the worst. See, let's watch where the pressure comes from. Straight up the middle. Warner, 91. Might have been 91 that got that. Buddy Moore. Buddy Moore. One of them did. Looked like Buddy. The man who got the big hand up, slapped it down. Now with 26 seconds, no timeouts remaining, Philadelphia's ball at the Michigan 47. How quickly it swings, huh? Certainly does. Yusina, good protection as everybody drops back to play center field and Scott Fitzke can't pull it down. Scott Fitzke coming back to the ball inside the zone, just reached to his left and just couldn't hold on to it. Another look at the blocked field goal. All the pressure comes from dead center. Tyrone McGriff's right there, just took a step back, and he let everybody in. That's 25, Scott Warner, but no, it's number 91, Buddy Moore, that does get his hands on the ball. Chuck Fusina now has missed seven passes in a row. But after last Saturday, you never give up on this bunch from Philadelphia, do you? Coming back from a 21-point deficit. I don't think seven. Really faces the 19 seconds to play. To the sidelines for Kelvin Bryant. And he can't come down with it. Kelvin Bryant running down the field with John Corker on the coverage. Corker just running, trying to keep up with Kelvin Bryant. Didn't even see the ball. Let's take a look at Kelvin coming out of the backfield. He just goes out to the sideline and swings it up. He's just going to run right past. John Corker, Corker pumping the arms, trying to keep up. Kelvin sees the ball, Corker doesn't. He looks back, too late. Kelvin lays out for it, it's a good effort, but he just comes up a bit short. It's the first time we've seen him this year, and we've seen Philadelphia six times. That's the first time I've seen him run a flag. Oh, running down D 
deep that way, yes. Third and ten. Twelve seconds to play. They got it. Number 76, John, John Benazak. Oh, John's happy about that. Of course, in John Zinger days, John, John would have been jumping around the quarterback, ranting and raving. That time, he's just happy to make the sack. Stall the drive of the Philadelphia Stars. Take a look at John. He's at the top of the screen, number 76. Gives it the right arm. Lift, and right there, if you see it, just turned right into his arms. Ball moves back now to the 43 of Philadelphia. It is fourth down, and the half is over. So time runs out after 30 minutes of football in this championship game of the United States Football League with the Michigan Panthers leading the Philadelphia Stars by a score of 10 to 3 at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. We'll be ready for halftime after this message and the word from our local stations. Well, you can see it's obvious that the passing attack of Michigan has been dominant in this ball game. 173 yards have also had the ball about three minutes more than the Philadelphia team. They have set themselves back time and time again. They have been penalized nine times for 65 yards. But the penalties for Philadelphia, four for 53, also sets them back, kind of evens it out. But when you look at Philadelphia, 55 yards rushing, 14 yards passing for a net 69. If you add in that the 53 penalties, 53 yards in penalties, they only net 16 yards in total offense. As we talked about in the halftime report that secondaries in the USFL and this team, both teams here included, do not really have the talent to go one-on-one. -on -one. Except in this ball game, the Michigan defensive secondary now has the confidence that they can cover one-on-one -on -one against Fitzky, uh, against Collier, and against Donovan. And Clarence Chapman has saved touchdowns on three different occasions. That's got to build his confidence to keep more people along that line of scrimmage to stop Kelvin Bryant and Harvard. Michigan in this ball game has also departed from its norm. Mm -hmm. because over the season they averaged 34 uh, rushes and 27 passes in this ball game now they've only run 13 times but thrown 25 so they've departed from their norm well they they come out they came out and they tried to run initially in their first series of downs they didn't move the ball well they came back put the ball in the air and both Derek Holloway even though Derek Holloway has the one touchdown in the first half both Holloway and Carter we're just a half a step away, three inches from making the catch that might have been six points in a long touchdown pass play. Carter right now with six catches for 104 yards on the day, and uh, that's not a bad first half. Not bad. <laughs> We're ready now for the start of the second half. Philadelphia will kick off. Dave Trout will kick to Lionel Fee and Jerome Stelly. And it's a long one. Stelly goes with it to the corner. The ball goes by him and through the end zone, and Michigan will have it first down out at the 20. And I presume, as we check the offensive unit as they come on the field, it'll be pretty much the same group that started the ball game. I see the tight end Mike Cobb there. Obviously, it'll be Bobby Hebert. Uh, Ken Lacey will be at a running back spot, along with Cleo Miller. The linemen are Godfrey McGriff, Radloff. Radloff was out for a time, but he is back. Dornbrook, Penny. The wide receivers, Holloway is in, and so is Carter. Michigan's defensive unit is Case Overfielder down. Mills, Brooks, uh, Howard, Bunning, linebacking. Sutton, Lush, Warner, and uh, Gibson in the secondary. And from the 21st down, Panthers. They lead 10-3. And they go to the ground with it to Ken Lacey. And Lacey spins off the stack and goes to the 26th. No, it might be to their advantage not having used Lacey that much in the first half, not having him become as big a victim to the altitude so that he's a little bit fresher here in the second half. But you see there, the, the Mich Michigan Panthers, all the mistakes they've made today come down to the penalties. They've been sacked three times for 17 yards and one turnover. Hasn't really hurt them on the scoreboard. Second down and four for the Panthers. Michigan in white, Philadelphia in red. Lacey picks his way into the line, and he is held short of the first down. The tackle is made by John Bunning and Mike Lush. If you call the Philadelphia safeties, Werner and Lush's name a lot on uh, tackles along the line of scrimmage because they play in there a lot. They come up on the blitzes. They're looking to make the sacks. They're looking to make the hits. And, you know, they, they get worn out in the day's work, Keith. They come back 
bumped and bruised, just all worn out. Ofer is out of there at the nose guard position, and John Alford comes in. And it's about a yard and a half for a first down. Third down, Michigan. Lacey goes for it and gets it. No, it's Miller. Miller. Leo Miller. And Miller got most of that on his own as he was hit really at the line of scrimmage and just drug a couple people across until he got the first down. Moved it out to the 31. Alfred comes out now and the Ofer goes back in. You were talking about tackles. Number 27, Mike Lush, is the second leading tackler on the defensive squad with 86. So that's an awful lot for, <laughs> for a free safety to be making. He weighs 190 pounds, taking on 220 pound running backs a lot of the time. Hebert rolls it and will throw it. Going big, Carter. No. First thing Anthony did when he ran between the double coverage of Werner and Gibson was to plead his case with the official over there, but that he had been bumped. And he may well have been bumped, but the official might have ruled he just couldn't make the catch anyway. Take a look. It's a deep zone. Bobby Hebert lets his ball loose before he even comes close to the secondary because he believes in the speed. There you see he gets jostled right there. He believes in Anthony Cutter's speed to run underneath the football, so he'll lay it out and take his chances. Second down and 10. Carter out for a rest. McLean is in. Lush showing blitz. They pick him up. Hebert gets it off short. Bounces the ball in front of Cleo Miller. That's not a complete pass. They're going to rule it so, but I swear the ball bounced in front of him. Fisher was standing behind him and couldn't see it. Couldn't see it. One of those close calls, one of those things when the Fisher's out of position, there's nothing he can do. Remember one thing, though, is they work with one less official than the NFL. That's right. That's a problem that uh, hopefully the USFL will correct by the time the 1984 season rolls around. All it takes is money. They seem to have a lot of that. <laughs> Alfred Taubman buying up 12,000 parking seats at five dollars selling for three for the Michigan playoff game last week. Third down and six. He also got better than 60,000 people to come. Back goes Hebert. Passes short to Carter. First down Michigan. Carter dropped up to 48 by Jonathan Sutton. Gives him a little pat on the back saying nice tackle. The seventh catch on the day Anthony Carter. He's done everything except score. You see, Jonathan Sutton, 26, coming up. He wants to give him a bump at the line of scrimmage. He's got deep help, and he's just going to roll with him when he sees the play coming inside. It's a little bit late, so he makes the catch. Carter is so quick when he comes to you, though, when you're trying to chuck him. It's sometimes you only get one hand on him. That's important for Carter, for all receivers, to be able to get away from that jam at the line of scrimmage. That's a penalty flag. The left side of the Michigan line took off too soon. Don Eccles went ahead of the snap. Uh, he saw the, probably saw out of the corner of his eye the movement of the defensive line, but they were just shifting, and he fired off. That's worth five yards. Third quarter of play. It's been a, an emotional ball game already. Not a lot of scoring. It's been so close to having a lot of scoring, but so far not. Just a step away. As I think in the second half, I think we'll see a different ball game altogether. Both teams settling Offside, down. Offside, number 88 on the offense. The penalty is declined. Second down. There was no gain on the play, so they declined the penalty and make it second down instead of first and 15, second and 10. Philadelphia trying to make some very quick defensive changes as Michigan comes to the line of scrimmage. Now it's going to force Hebert to look around and probably check off. Back to throw it. They got him. They oh. got enough of him, I guess. Oh, he. Number 96, Don Fielder from Kentucky is the man that will get credit for the sack. But I don't think when the rule was made about having him in the grass, it was designed for this kind of tackle. Now certainly, he has him around the ankle. He cannot hurt Bobby Abeer. 
and a man with his size and his strength should be allowed the opportunity to try and get free of a tackle like that. If he's got him about the waist, he's got a hand on his upper body, I can see calling that whistle, calling it a sack at that point. Loss of seven yards, third down and 17 from the 41. They swing it out, set up the screen for Lacey. And Lacey breaks it. And gets the first down at the Philadelphia 31. And Roger Jackson, who works as the nickel back, brought him down. Save that, he's gone. Keith, this play was a perfect example of having the right play against the right defense. They got him in the blitz. They were catching the corner coming off Antonio Gibson. The low short screen pass to Ken Lacey. Look at the blocking he gets downfield. Jonathan Sutton was blocked. He's on his knees. Picks up a few more. Keeps his balance. Stays in bounds. And it's just run out of bounds at that point. Number 25, Scott Warner, is back in the coverage. He sees the play developing. This is the angle of pursuit he takes. He's got a shot at him. Gets by the block. And he doesn't make the tackle. Roger Jackson. Mike Lush stopping Ken Lacey. First down Michigan at the 31. Mike Hagan is now in the Michigan backfield. Number 34. Ball goes to Cleo Miller as they take Lacey out for a breather. And Hagan moves it pretty well before Buddy Moore brings him down. There's Ken Lacey getting oxygen in Denver. Move to it quickly in this altitude. Mike Hagan is out of Montana. Six feet, 215. 23-year-old rookie. He had a tryout in the NFL. Didn't make it there. But uh, he was a starter earlier in the year. A good tough back. Keith, what we're seeing now is the same kind of football Michigan played last week. They got the passing game working well, got some points in the scoreboard very quickly, then they started handing it off because the defense was spread out. Second down and six on the 27. Avery wants to go quick for Holloway and overthrows it. Eric's only 5'7. That time he was just caught in between. The linebacker slipping to the outside. The cornerback, 23, Antonio Gibson on top of him. And the ball was just thrown away. Bobby Hebert, anticipating the blitz, had a route called for the blitz. And when they didn't show it, had the wrong pattern call. Took a short drop, and the linebacker was right there in front of his receiver. It's third down and six. Lacey is back. Staying in the air. But Carter got it. First down inside the 15. At the 14, Sutton made the tackle. Bobby A. Bear zipped the ball in between number 57, Gabrielson, and number 54, Sam Mills. Did a real fine job. Anthony Carter just runs down the field. You have to respect the speed. You're starting to see a lot of it right here. He just zings it in between 56, George Cooper, and 57, Gabrielson. So it's first down Michigan at the Philadelphia 14, and the Panthers open up with an impressive possession to start the second half. Anthony Card on the sideline getting a little rest. They've held on to the ball now almost seven minutes. Hebert's got it. He's looking touchdown for Cobb, and he misses Big Michael, and well, the pass is incomplete. Well, it's a good thing that he misses because Warner was just behind him had he thrown it in range for him it would have been picked off let's go down to Tim Brandt Keith and Swanee you may have just seen Ken Lacey come out for that breather he was sick in the first half was not used that much he came out shaking his head he feels very weak although he is back in the ball game Derek Holloway same thing he was sick as well sick to the stomach they've both been taking oxygen they both feel very weak Timmy did they eat at the same restaurant <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know <laughs> Second down and 10 from the 14. Again, it's Warner coming up, showing blitz. Hebert changes his call, throws the ball out. The ball is dropped by Cleo Miller. Cleo Miller wide open. That's the second time now Cleo has dropped the football when he's been out there loose on that pattern. He just had the, he was just wide open out in the flat. The ball was coming right to him. About waist high, and he just didn't hold on to it. Just playing out, drop, drop the football. That no, happens no. from time to time with running backs. They're not as used to the wide receivers through to catching that ball. They've held the ball now for almost eight minutes in this third quarter. Third down and ten.
He whips it to Holloway. Touchdown. Second touchdown for Holloway. Bear is down hard. 14-yard touchdown pass. Bear was hit by Antonio Gibson coming in on the blitz. And he was just decked. He didn't see him coming. Maybe felt his presence. Read the blitz, got the ball away quickly on the man-to-man -man route to Derek Holloway for his second touchdown of the ball game. But right now, the most important thing is the condition of Bobby Bear. Number 23, Antonio Gibson, comes from the top of the screen on the blitz, hits him from behind there, and just drops down to the ground. He doesn't look hurt there. He's holding in the middle of his lower back. Again, the route by Derek Holloway. Just a quick slant. Gets position on Roger Jackson. And the little man takes Roger Jackson into the end zone for the touchdown. Jackson being 6'1", 185 pounds. With Bear down on the field, some of the joy of the touchdown is diminished for the Michigan Panthers. At 7 minutes and 49 seconds to play in the third quarter, Keith Jackson, Lynn Swan, Tim Brandt, along with our ABC Sports crew in Denver, Colorado, for this USFL championship, Denver. Done a fine job of posting the game. We have not had the crowd posted, but it's expected it'll be in excess of 40,000 people. Hebert gets up and will trot off the field, but you see he's holding the lower portion of his back. Keith, his substitute will be number 10, Whit Taylor. Out of Vanderbilt. Who's out of Vanderbilt. He's a 50% passer, and he was also runner-up to Herschel Walker for most valuable player in the SEC. Good quarterback. Not as big as Hebert. He's only about 5'11". Lejovic for the extra point now as Taylor holds. It's good. So at 7 minutes and 49 seconds to play in the third quarter, Michigan goes 80 yards in 15 plays and jumps out to a 17-3 lead over the Philadelphia Stars. Quarterback delivers the touchdown pass. Antonio Gibson, number 23, comes in. Pushes him in the back, but I see no real severe contact. It looks like the injury might have occurred when Bobby slipped down on his knee. That has to be where it occurred because he didn't even hit him in that area no. of the back. Could have been a muscle pull. It just could have been uh, the position he was in. Having been in back as he was coaching one of his own linemen. Bojovic kicks it a mile. High and long. Well, he is Push down Philadelphia at the 20. He is certainly one kicker that has performed very consistently. Here's Tim Brandt now with some news about Bobby Hebert. Keith, they're still working on Bobby behind me. You can see that. He wears padding for his ribs and his back, but he was hit below the padding. There is a tremendous bruise on his lower back. He just told the trainers that he is fine. He's going to come back in the ballgame. Okay. Everybody in partisan to Michigan is now taking a deep breath, though obviously it appears Bobby is still in some pain and Whit Baylor is warming up, and we've got a timeout on the field. And all just a little bit more than half the game being played, haven't been played so far. 17 to 3, Michigan as Philadelphia comes now from their 20, first down. They haven't done much with the offense so far tonight. Michigan has shut them down. Kelvin Bryant. They've got him strung out. He's going the other way. Corker missed him. He's got some help over there, and he's got a lot of room. And he's got a first down. That kind of play is why he was voted the MVP. That Picked might fire up the team. Picked up about 22 yards on the play. He's got everybody in the world blocking in front of him on this pitch. To our left, his right, he's got Booker Russell. And right here, he just stops, rolls back around, gets some distance from he and John Corker. Corker just can't get a grip on him. And using his speed, he's got Chuck Fusina as a lead blocker. And he takes out 22 Clarence Chapman. <laughs> what a contradiction. Oh, he two-yard line, first down. Fusina's got it, gets his pass away, pass caught by Fitzky. And he's inside the 40, and there's a penalty flag. Late hit by Greenwood. They'll tack on 15, and that'll take the ball down to the 23 of Michigan. Two big plays offensively by the Philadelphia Stars. Kelvin Bryant on the great scramble. Now Chuck Fusina getting away from pressure, finding Scott Fitzke. Everybody's off him deep in the zone. Gets it right in front of Pennywell. 
He makes a good run, and then Greenwood drops on top of him, spears him. That'll be an additional 15 First yards. Counting on number 31 on the defense. First down. Now Philadelphia trying to respond to Michigan's third quarter touchdown. So in three plays, the Philadelphia Stars have gone 57 yards. Chuck Vicina breaking his string of incompletes. He had had eight in a row. Alan Harvin, tough runner. Inside the 20, gets to the 16. Seven yards. Michigan man hurt. It's Alan Hughes, defensive end. Not hurt that badly. He struggles to get up. But get up he does, pulling a little bit of the dirt out of his helmet. Yeah, he took a big big clod out from under his helmet. That's and Bobby they got ice on Bobby. He's a tough kid. If the doctor will let him. Ball is just inside the 17. Bill Dolch replacing Alan Hughes. Harvin and Riley in the backfield. Harvin with it. Tripped up David by Greenwood. Greenwood. David Greenwood came in that time from the safety position, strong safety position. Just to go under the lead blocker. Penalty Trip flag is thrown way up in the air by one of the officials on the sidelines. Number 78 threw the flag, Grover Klimmer, so let's see what the call is. I think it's going to go against Tom Donovan, number 87. That's who the official was pointing at. 5.37 to play in the third quarter. Philadelphia trying to respond to Michigan's third quarter touchdown and stay close. It's a personal foul. That's a big one. 15 yards. Oh, David Greenwood gives Philadelphia, gave Philadelphia 15 yards. And now, what I think they'll call is uh, the penalty against Tom Donovan. He gives it back, takes it away. Personal foul, number 87 on the offense, second down. The ball comes back to the 34. What are the, the rules differences in this league that we have not pointed out is on pass interference? Unless it's intentional pass interference, it is only a 15-yard penalty against the defense. Three wide receivers in the ball game now. From the 34. Yusina has time, goes down the middle, finds Fitzke, and Fitzke dives back to the 17. So they're going to need about three yards on third down. That one play gets a big chunk of it back. Jim Stanley watching his defense as they're playing again, more playing more zones now. And that's what Scott Fiske loves to operate against, using his knowledge of, of defensive secondaries to just get in between those seams, making the catch, getting closer to that first down. It's close to four yards. Got to go down to the 13 to get the first down. They're at the 17. Parker's coming. Harbin holds him off. You've seen his pass is low and incomplete intended for Collier. Greenwood was covering. They're working on David Greenwood right now. He's involved, isn't he? Yes, very involved, and Involved in the positive way at this point as far as the Michigan Panthers are concerned because the pass was incomplete. Dave Trapp will come out now for the field goal. He hit one from 30. He'll kick this one, 34. misses on a 34-yard field goal by Trout and uh, the Michigan Panthers now get the ball back and they lead 17 to 3 with four minutes and 44 seconds to play in the third quarter of the championship game the comparison of the two quarterbacks tells you a great deal about why the score is 17 to 3 and Bobby Hebert much more efficient today he came into the ball game as a uh, 56 percent passer and he is uh, on that mark today. Yep. Especially long. Especially long. Carter and Holloway wide. Leo Miller on a 
sweep, cuts it back, and gets good yardage out of it. About nine. Close to a first down. Frank let, Case got it. Let me correct that. He's a 57 percent pass. Cleo Miller is doing the real good job. He, when he gets the ball, they're just stringing out that defensive line. As soon as he sees a hole, he just turns it up right up field, runs straight ahead using his power. North Anthony and Carter is holding his left leg and trotting off the field. Looks like a hamstring. Or a cramp. You're right. Hamstring and cramp. McLean replaces it. Second down, a half a yard for the first down. Leo Miller gets the first down and breaks it big. All the way out to the 48. So he picks up about 19 yards on that gallop. Running behind. Well, the way they're working on his feet, I can tell now that you're right, Keith, it is a cramp. Up here at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, it's a very dry climate here. So you perspire a lot, and sometimes that perspiration is absorbed quickly, and you don't really realize how much you're losing, how much salt you're losing out there of potassium. First down, Michigan. Again, they're showing an impressive running game here in this third quarter. They have dominated it. Miller again. And he picks up at least three, possibly four. Miller stands 5'11", weighs 215. He's 30 years old. He played at Arkansas and then played nine years with the Cleveland Browns. He's run eight times for 52 yards in the ball game. Keith, something I just happened to notice, I don't know how long Philadelphia has been doing this, but when they shifted that defensive line, they brought a lineman back off the line of scrimmage, and it looked very much like the Dallas Cowboy flex defense that I've seen so many times in the past. Ain't working too well right now. Well, so far it's not working. I wonder how long they've been doing it. We haven't seen it this year. Not much, anyway. Hebert straight back. He loops his pass out, and Lacey makes a fine catch, and then takes on Sutton, and Sutton pulls him out of bounds. Sutton really tossed him once he got out, out of bounds into a lot of different, a lot of the people, players, on the Philadelphia bench. Take a look. Bear Brooks coming in on the blitz, just tips that ball a little bit, Knocks it off his path. But That's the same play that David Shaw intercepted last Sunday last and ran for a touchdown for Oakland. That time, Ken Lacey made a good grab, yeah, getting his body around for the ball. Instead of it being a loss, he picked up a few yards. John Williams, who has played only occasionally in the ball game, comes in now because of a sore foot. And timeout. Five seconds are on the 30-second clock, and the, fillet and the Michigan offense just was not ready to play. Let's go down to the sidelines and see what Tim Brandt has for us. Listen, guys, you were exactly right on Anthony Carter's injury. It is cramps. They're working on him behind me. He's now just trying to rest, trying to let the muscles relax. They've given him liquid. They're trying to get some salt back into his body. You mentioned the air being thin. It is bothering all these players. They've been having cramps. They've been having stomach problems. And also, they've been having trouble with the oxygen. They've been trying to get their breath. Keith? Two minutes and 16 seconds to play in the third quarter. Michigan leading 17 to 3. And looking at third down and five. There you see the success ratio of third down conversions. Michigan 9 for 12. A whopping 75% success rate coming into this ball game. They're only 37.5. And 1 for 11. 1 for 11 for Philadelphia. Well, that tells another story. We've got a small problem right now with the stadium clock. That's why we're being held up for a moment. Apparently, was, uh, was Michigan charged with a timeout there? They were. So they have two timeouts remaining. And as soon as we can get the stadium clock organized and roll it down to the correct time, as the referee Bill Parkinson or someone, one of the officials spotted it, uh, they've run it off now to 225 and we'll put the ball in play. It'll be third down and a long five just inside the Philadelphia 48 yard line. McLean and Stelling are your wide receivers now along with Holloway. Holloway's almost lined up offside. That's McLean in motion and Abear rolls it. 
And loops it, and it's tipped away. Tipped away, looked like number 57 got his hand up and slapped it out of there. Jeff Gabrielson, who comes out of Ripon in Wisconsin. He played in Montreal for two years, one year in Ottawa. And uh, the big guy from Ripon has been playing a lot of late for the Philadelphia Stars. It brings up a fourth down and brings in the punter, David Greenwood. He's hit kicks of 42 and 38, knocking the 38-yarder out of bounds at the six in the second quarter. He'll be aiming for the sideline once again. He hits it too long into the end zone. He really twisted it out of there that time. It had 47 yards. So with 2.10 to go, Philadelphia will get the ball back here in the third quarter. And they're down by 14. They send Polson the tight end in motion. Fusina pitches it to Kelvin Bryant. Bryant gets around the corner. Picks his way through the crowd. And he's close to a first down. He's got a first down as David Tipton and Clarence Chapman finally brought him down. Bryant picked up a real good, real fine block by Booker Russell on John Corker to get out of the backfield and turning it upfield for the big game. Ball moves to the 34. Our telecast tonight being sent live to Italy, Hong Kong, Thailand, Spain, and England. So as we say out west, hi, y'all. Hope you're enjoying it. Alan Harbin in now. Right out for breath. Harbin back to throw his famous pass. He shoots it downfield, and it is Parker. And he Parker comes it. down with it. How he, about that? He caught it, sandwiched between number 22, Clarence Chapman, number 25, John Arnott, well, I didn't think he had a chance at all for the ball. Let's take a look. We start with Greenwood, number 31. He's running around trying to figure out just where he's going. He sees the ball handed off to Harvin. Now he's caught out of position. The ball is in the air. Now watch Parker in between two defensive backs. Here's the ball right into his arm. Oh, he juggles it. Great concentration on this part. Alan Arvin becoming Philadelphia's most famous passer. He had a big one last week to Chuck Fusino for a touchdown. He's a first down. He's 100% so far. That <laughs> one a 41-yard gain. 23-yard line. And the ball is handed off again to Harvin. And he gets a yard, maybe two, before Ray Bentley slows him down. You cannot sit back and rest on the lead when you're playing the Philadelphia Stars. And they come out surprisingly enough with the gadget plays that seemed to work last week it was Harvin to Pacino for the touchdown this time Harvin to Parker he juggles the ball hangs on to it hits the ground and he's out of bounds second down and nine Bryant is back in Kelvin Bryant and he's inside the five they'll mark him at the four and there are a string of Michigan Panthers on the ground behind Kelvin Bryant. The first one was number 31, David Greenwood, as he came flying in, trying to force the play from the safety position. Here he is at the bottom. He just slants in. He takes out the lead blocker. He's going to Kelvin step out Bryant. of bounds here too, Swanee. You back up field a little bit. Right there, right he just there. steps out of bounds. And that's it for Kelvin Bryant, but it's a big game for the Philadelphia Stars. Nine-yard line, first and goal to go. Kelvin now 12 carries, 93 yards. Harbin is back in. Fusina looks to throw it, swings it out for Harbin. The pass is incomplete. A little play action pass off the sweep. Trying to throw the ball, trying to lull the defense up again to playing aggressively, hoping that they could free number 81, Scott Fitzke. Didn't work, so he just tried to dump the ball off to Allen Harbin. Secondary. Receiver. He should have looked a little longer because Fitzke was breaking loose on the goal post. He probably had the time to do that, but he didn't want to take the chance. Second down and goal to go from the nine. They almost have to score here. It's an almost. They give it to Harvin to pick his way up the middle, and he gets to the five. And it'll be third down and goal from the five. 
Now what do you do? Bryant's on the sidelines. Ken Dunnick, number 80, goes in. David Riley goes in, a blocking fullback, and Kelvin Bryant goes in, and they're going to let the time run out in the third quarter. So we've played 45 minutes. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. The score, Michigan 17, Philadelphia 3. Back for the final quarter after this message and the word from our local stations. Statistics for the third quarter. There you see the big difference is the time of possession, 26-26 for Michigan, 18-34 for Philadelphia. And Philadelphia Stars is starting to come back here in the second half, moving the ball well on the ground, getting a little bit better also in the air. Right now, they face a third and goal from the Michigan Five. And Fusina rolls out the throw. Corker gets him. John Corker. He tried with the bootlegged around, and Corker was right there. Well, I thought the ball might have been going to Kelvin Bryant on the sweep. But John Corker, the sack man, gets another one today. Third. Comes down from the bottom of the screen. He's just looking at the quarterback all the way. Grabs hold. This time he's not going to let go. Hangs on tight. You, you know, John that. doesn't Close pay down. a bit of attention to the fake. He just goes after that quarterback. No, I think in that case, the play was going away from him. Didn't make nope. a difference. He'd have to follow the play anyway. 28-yard field goal try by David Trout. Got it. So it's now 17 to 6. About two out of three in his field goal tries. Michigan gets away from the big threat as Philadelphia settles for three. 36 seconds to play in this first championship game of the United States Football League. And it's a 17 to 6 lead for the Michigan Panthers. Turned away, Philadelphia's try for its first touchdown of the ball game. David Prop kicks off. Very, very high, and it's Jerome Stilley. A wide receiver coming hard. Big all the way out to the 37 before Jeff Rodenberger brings him down. Keith, the way he was running, he jumped up in the air before he got tackled. He looked like he may have pulled something or cramped up. You see now he's being helped off the field. Watch him right here. Takes the ball. Good kick. He's got great blocking in front of him. Now watch coming up right here. He just jumps up in the air. Right there. Yep. That's when his leg goes on. Could be a pull. Michigan with good field position after the effort by Stelly out on their 36. And Bear is in there at quarterback. Cleo Miller and Ken Lacey behind him. And he's going to put it up on first down. Gets it away to Lacey and Lacey dropped it. Well, those running backs, as you pointed out earlier, in the case of Michigan, haven't had all that much experience as receivers, and you've got to get it before you can run with it. Terry Miller, who came over to Michigan, played well for a time, then had a severe break of his thumb, and John Williams' activity limited tonight because of a sore toe, turf toe, which is worse than a wisdom tooth. Oh, I had that a couple of times, Keith, and... Uh, it's not pleasant, not by any means. Second down and ten. A Bear takes a look at Carter, looks the other way for Holloway, goes for Holloway. It's thrown right into the hands of Mike Lush. Lush throws the ball back to number 25, Scott Werner, and Werner is now wrestled down at the 40. That pass by Bobby A. Bear was just too high. Derek Holloway sitting in the middle of... of between a couple of defensive backs. Couldn't get up for that. And now there's a Michigan player who's hurt. Cleo Miller. Sitting at the 40 yard line. Take a look at this. A Bear looks. Just throws it over the top. The only person who can make the play is Mike Lush. And he's in perfect position. He flips it back to Scott Warner. Trying to recreate some of the magic. That Lacey had when he pitched it back to John Williams last week. That fellow that took a shot at him and missed him was Anthony Carter. I don't think AC will ever wind up playing uh, in the defensive <laughs> secondary. <laughs> Not by a long shot. That's Mike Lush. He's done a fine job all year for the Philadelphia Stars. Cleo Miller now is up and leaving the field, walking off. So apparently he's all right. 
First down for Philadelphia from the 41. Eusena gets his pass off to the sidelines. It is caught by Steve Folsom, the tight end. Not much yardage on the play, about two yards. Chuck Eusena was reading the blitz. 25, John Arnott came up, was playing games with him, changed the play. Play designed to go against the blitz, and it was complete, but again, not for very much. Rodney Parker goes in, and Willie Collier comes out. Collier's been pretty quiet tonight. In fact, Parker has been the, Parker and Pitsky have been the prime receivers. You see this pass is thrown short to Allen Harbin, and Harbin gets it up to midfield, but he's a little bit short of his first down by a yard. Keith, you talked about lulls, team having lulls. Well, I thought in a championship game, and my thinking is you don't have a lull. But if you do, maybe the Michigan Panthers had one just after the long drive in the, in the start of the third period because offensively, they have not been able to get anything going. Defensively, they've been allowing the Philadelphia Stars to pick up momentum and to make big plays. They've been susceptible now to the gadget plays and to the score and to the uh, passing game. Third down and one. Philadelphia's only converted on third down one out of 12 times to this moment, but I think they have just done it for the second time in 13. As Piscina took the ball and rode it right in behind Oates and Comiskey, and he has the first down. You know something else they've not done now is uh, Booker Russell has not carried the ball a single time tonight, neither has David Riley. And we have seen Booker Russell break some big plays. That's right. They've just been giving the ball to... Alan Harvin and Kelvin Bryant trying to put the ball in the air, but they haven't really had the ball as much offensively as they would like to, as they're accustomed to having the ball. Ball is thrown too hard to Harvin. That's not Harvin's fault. David Greenwood, number 31, was coming in on the blitz. Tucina saw it and just wanted to get the ball away because in that particular play, there was no one blocking David Greenwood. He would have come in free. So let's credit that incomplete pass to David Greenwood rushing Chuck Piscina. He's talking about uh, trying to make a move from the USFL to the NFL, go to the New Orleans Saints. Well, I think you're going to see that players who are developing in both leagues, the young ball players, will be in a position to make those changes in the future. Second down and ten. You've seen his pass. Good to Fitzky. He's running for the marker, and he gets there. First down, Philadelphia. Again, Going against his own defense, the Michigan Panthers have gotten away from the kind of pressure that they were able to get on Tucson in the first half. To playing more zones could be a problem of the heat and conditioning being a little bit more tired. That's Carl Peterson in the blue shirt, general manager for the Philadelphia Stars. Very responsible for building this team. He selected Jim Moore just a few weeks prior to the training camp as the head coach of this ball club. You've seen it back. Throws a little swing out to Harvin. Harvin is caught by Ray Bentley. Oh, what a play by Ray Bentley. They did a good job. John Corker was on the outside. David Greenwood was also up, reading the screen. Bentley did a good job just slicing in from his linebacker position in between the blockers who should have been out in front of the screen. Let's take a look at Bentley. Number 50. Now they're trying to let people come through, but there are only three people rushing. There's the pass. Tusina looking on in vain because he probably saw Bentley coming in from the inside. Second down at about 15. Passes away and dropped in a penalty flag. Folsom had it on his hands. The flag may very well go against John Arnold. Tom Donovan, number 87, is pointing at 21, Oliver Davis. What a dramatic. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it is Davis. It is against Michigan, and it is apparently either holding or interference. Holding on the defense, number 21. Yep. That's a first down. Well, suddenly now it's a big play for Philadelphia because Davis holds him right there. He just grabs him by the face mask as he was trying to get loose, and the official was right on top of it through the flag. That's a pretty effective chuck. And yeah, that's a real effective chuck. <laughs> it's, an illegal, it's illegal to chuck a receiver to the helmet, to the head. First down, the ball is at the 38th of Michigan. 
you see now? Going to be caught. Ridden down by Alan Hughes out of Western Michigan, 6'3", 260. Alan Hughes had to go a long way to get him, but he didn't give up on him. Alan Hughes, drafted by the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers. He just, number 98, now watch him. He's at the bottom of the screen. He gets in between the tackle and the guard, between Oates and Kaminsky, and he just chases Fusina. He's chasing him. Fusina's striding to run, but just can't build up the steam to get away from him. Fourth sack, 35 yards lost. By the Philadelphia quarterback, second down, 12. Ball comes back to the 40. Ryan is not in there. Harvin. Harvin picks up Corker. The pass goes over the middle, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Collier. Collier had his hands on the ball. Just dropped it. Let's check in with Sam Mills tonight, the linebacker for Philadelphia, as he talks with Tim Brent. Sam, the defense has been turning it over and playing well, but the offense has to make some points. Well, yeah, I think that's the key to the game. The offense has to come up with a, a big play or two, and I think we'll be right back in the game. What's been the problem thus far? Well, the problem, well, I, I really can't tell the problem right now because uh, I'm a defensive player, and I, I really don't know. But uh, I think Chuck, is he's beginning to get the hang of things, and I think he's going to come up with some big plays for us. Okay, Keith. Third and 12, he needs one right here. Down the middle, it's good to Fitzke, but he's short of the first down. Now Jim Morris got a decision to make. Great pressure by 76, John Banizak, number 72, Dokes, number 99, Ronnie Padgett, all in there, applying pressure to Chuck Fusina as he gets the ball away. Just watch the charge. Banizak, 76, goal comes from the outside, 72 is Dokes, and Tipton's on the top, gets the ball away to Fitzke. But John Arnott, number 25, is here to make the tackle short of the first down. They're going for it on fourth down as Bryant goes back into the ball game. They need four yards. Fourth and four. The ball at the 31 of Michigan. Going to throw for it over the middle, and he's got it. Willie Collier makes a tough catch right in among all the linebackers that Corker and Bentley hammered him but the little guy came up with it Willie hung on he, had, he hung on for it paid the price but he knew when the play was called that that might be the case an inside route it was called before makes a catch right in the middle of three linebackers Bentley Corker and number 59 Robert Pennywell Willie Collier 5'10 180 that's a little bit of a mismatch yeah, that's a lot of it he's being carried off the field that's right Hurt his leg. Those of you up in Toronto, Willie, I'm sure, is remembered for his work with the Argonauts. He played two years up there. Keith, that was his first and only catch. I know. Of the ball game. First catch. Yeah. But he got the first down, and that's what really counts in his mind, I'm sure. The ball is at the 24, and Fusina back. Loops it downfield for Parker, thrown too long. Oliver Davis was right with it. That time... Man-to-man -man coverage across the board by the Michigan Panthers. They have a blitz coming on. Just the quick takeoff. We've seen this pass, this pass play a lot in football. Just a quick takeoff to the outside, over the defensive cornerback's head where he can't see it. Hopefully, the receiver can lay out and make the catch. That time, throwing too far for Rodney Parker. David Riley comes in on second down and ten, and Booker Russell comes out. Steve Folsom is out. The tight end. Three wide receivers now. Bryant's in there in the backfield with Riley. Blitz is on. Fusinas passes away to Fitzke. Tries to shake a tackler and can't do it. That's Clarence Chapman. And Chapman brought him down after a short game. Chuck Fusina was laid down by number 57, John Corker. Everybody's coming here. He gets challenged right here by Kelvin Bryant. Takes him on. Gets by him. And just as the ball is delivered, he makes contact with Fusina. Now here's a shot of Fitzke. He's going against Clarence Chapman. Just a little delay route, a little shallow crossing route, only about five yards deep. Yep. Take that back, only about three yards deep. Collier's back. Loops it downfield. Oh, what a great catch! What a marvelous catch by Willie Collier. I'll tell you one thing, 
Wooly Collier from the University of Pittsburgh was in the Pittsburgh Steelers training camp. He must have been getting acting lessons from Terry Bradshaw. He was literally carried off the field. No one would have thought he was coming back. But he comes back in the ball game, man-to-man -man coverage. He makes a big play, a diving catch for the touchdown. Chuck Fusina now bringing his team back. He's now hit 11 passes in a row. The Philadelphia Stars now are going for two to try to make this a 14-17 ball game. It's 11 pass play in a row, I should say. And Fusina rolls out to throw this one. He's got a man, and it's good to Collier for the two-point conversion, and now Philadelphia is back in the hunt with eight minutes and 49 seconds to play in the ball game. It is Michigan 17, Philadelphia 14. And this, frankly, is sort of the way we thought it would go because these are the two best teams in the USFL. Collier working with the oxygen tank, trying to restore his body after two remarkable efforts. Keith, they passed out some sheets that appear in the press box voting for MVPs. I hope everybody's waited to make that selection on this ball game. Yeah. That kick is way back and out of the end zone by Dave Trout. There will be no return of it. Michigan will have it at the 20 now. The question is, does Michigan have the law at hand or can they break out of uh, their inactivity in the fourth quarter? Right now, let's spend a moment with Tim Brandt and Willie Collier. This team continues to come back. Time and time again, you were just carried off the field. What was it, Willie? No, I had a serious ankle sprain last week against Chicago, you know, and it never did here, you know, right, but uh, still kind of sore a little bit. I'm just going to go out and play anyway, though. This is the money game now. You laid out, you made a tremendous catch. Thank you for real, though. This, this is a money game. Jimmy, Time to lay it all really the line. to be carried okay. off the field. Okay. Ask him, Tim, if he, uh, if that, uh, did he really have to be carried off the field, or was he just putting on a little acting job? <laughs> Willie Keith wants to know, did you really have to be carried off the field, or did you want a breather? No, I, I actually had to be carried off the field because my ankle is real tender, and I got hit, and I kind of twisted a little bit. It was hard for me to walk at first, but once I got over on the side, I loosened up a little bit, and I was able to go back in. Tell us about the touchdown play. Well, it was just was a safety blitz, you know, and me and Chuck the looked at each other as we saw the players starting, you know, he rubbed from the line of scrimmage, he just laid out there and I caught it. That blitz has been giving you problems all night. Uh, yeah, I know, you know, I, in the first half I missed a, a blitz pickup, but, you know, I'm ready now. It's time to play. Okay, Keith. Sure is. They're behind by three points and 8.41 to play in the ball game, and they got to contend with a Michigan offense that has been rolling along pretty much tonight, but it has slowed down noticeably here in the fourth quarter. They give the ball to Cleo Miller. Gets a lot of blocking to get around the corner and goes for the first down. Well, Cleo Miller is not about to slow down. He did everything right that time except for stay in bounds and score. Got to the outside, picked up the first down. Getting some excellent blocking from that offensive line. That play has worked well for Michigan throughout the entire day. You can see the yards there. This, just in this half, Philadelphia 182, Michigan 109. Miller is now the leading Michigan runner with a 63-yard total on nine carries. Carter and Holloway in. First down for the Panthers. They work it inside and get a couple of yards out of it. I think what they're trying to do right there, Keith, is anticipate the blitz, get everybody up in the line of scrimmage, and get just get that quick opening play through the line and break Cleo Miller into the secondary. Ball is sitting on the 34. Second down and eight. that time and he's dropped after a couple of yards by Don Fielder so now the Michigan defense is putting it up to a bear he's coming up with third down and about five deja vu Keith I've seen this somewhere before we saw a Chicago team get conservative try and run the ball in the fourth period against the Philadelphia Stars after they had the momentum and their emotions were high and they were stopped cold I don't think Michigan wants to be conservative Certainly they should, they can put the ball in the air effectively. Let's see who he goes to. Werner blitzing, they give it to Miller. Miller, great blocking. 
Short of his first down, a little bit, just short. I think it's Don Fielder who made the saving tackle. Looked like Cleo was going to get a full head of steam and come blowing around the corner. And then Fielder showed up. Cleo took that handoff, started to run, saw the blocking develop, and saw the hole inside. Just turned it up, figured he'd go after it. But it was tripped up just a little bit short. So now the Philadelphia defense plays well. Three downs, or four downs, actually. They hold them to one first down. Greenwood to See punt. if they're going after Greenwood here now. They've got ten people up there. I think they will. They'll go, and go after them, try and put some pressure on them. And Scott Warner, if he's got room, will catch it and run. If not, he'll call the fair catch, which we haven't seen often from him. Some pressure. The kick's out of there. It's a spinner that bounces past Warner and the worst mistake in the world. Scott Warner, instead of grabbing the ball and bringing it back across the 20, let it get by him. And it is dead at the five-yard line. 55-yard punt with the roll, and it rolled a good 25 yards. I told you that Philadelphia was inefficient in its first eight possessions, but growing more efficient. But in the championship game with 6.09 to play, the ball goes by and Scott Werner, the punt. It's down on the five, 95 yards away from the lead in this football game. A pretty tough spot to be in against a team like Michigan, but Fusina's going to put it up on first down, and he's got a man over there. Folsom is tight in. Folsom is out of bounds up around the 12, so he gets a little breathing room with it, seven yards worth. Chuck Fusina now getting the time to throw, being a great deal more accurate, not trying to go for a whole lot of territory, move the ball quickly down the field, but take his time, hitting his tight end on the sideline, hitting... Fitzky on the sideline and Donovan and Willie Collier for the short ones. Second down and three from the 12. Hand off to Bryant. Corker was the man. John Corker on a blitz inside. He head faked outside, went inside. Bryant tried to cut back and ran right into him and then Phil Dokes put him away. There were no less than seven, six players for the Michigan Panthers who are in on this play. You see Cork at the bottom, on the left, excuse me, on the right of the screen, 57 coming in, makes contact, Bill Dokes makes contact, Greenwood makes contact, John Benazak is there. It's and third down 65, and four now. David Tipton was there. Ball is near the 11, third down and four. Parker's in motion. You've seen it needs to put it up. Corker is dumped, the pass is thrown short, bouncing in front of Willie Collier. Yusina had his man and just didn't hit him. Yusina had his man and Kelvin Bryant had his when he, when he just upended up John Corker. Ended John Corker, John Corker coming in, saw Kelvin Bryant going low to make the block, jumped up in the air, but Kelvin Bryant just stayed on his feet, came up, flipped him right over on his helmet, gave Chuck Yusina the time, but Chuck Yusina threw it low to Willie Collier. Now it's up to Sean Landetta to bail Philadelphia out of trouble. 17-14 Michigan lead, 5-10 to play, high kick. Not his longest, but is a terrific hang time. And Carter fumbles it, but picks it up. Anthony Carter almost lost it. He is dropped back on the 37 by Jeff Rodenberger, and it turns out to be a 52-yard punt. So Landetta once again does his job, but I think perhaps Anthony Carter could have called fair catch because that ball was so high, the coverage was very good ball is at the Michigan 37. First down for the Panthers. They lead by three points, 5-0-4 to play in the ball game. Now, Lynn Swan, do you figure that Bobby Abers? I figure he's got to go to the air. That's what, yeah, he has to go to the air. If he waits until third down, then they're going to blitz and put the pressure on him. It's much more difficult. If he goes to the air now, he keeps him off balance. Michigan needs to hold on to the football for a while to give their defensive team some rest. Hands it off to Cleo Miller. Miller turns the corner all right, but then runs into traffic and is dragged down. He's hit first by number 27, Mike Lush, and then number 52, Vince Damaris, came in and finished him off. Mike Lush just popped him, stopped him cold. Damaris 
Took him back about four or five yards. Yeah, but he still play. got six yards. Oh, no, he still got six yards in the play, which is a good, game, which is a very good game. Running left can be very effective. Chicago Blitz did it all year. Most football teams tend to stack to the right side. I don't mean to second guess Jim Stanley, but it's at this point I'd still go to the air a little short pass instead of winning the third down. Ken Lacey, he's got the first down. It's a good thing I'm not a coach. <laughs> yeah, he turned it around pretty well and put it over on the Philadelphia side. This is the paid attendance in tonight's ball game. 46,535 paid with the guests 50,906. 50906. So the, the deal on the blackout locally here was if they got 45,000 uh, tickets sold, then they would lift the blackout, which they did. And they wind up with over 50,000 total in the ballpark. It's good support by Denver, which was the leading attendance city in the USFL for its Denver goal. They stay with the ground game, but there's nothing that time. Right at the line of scrimmage as Lush came up and nailed Lacey. That time, instead of coming up to the line of scrimmage, showing the blitz, Mike Lush stayed back and then came up at the last moment after the play developed, and Lacey is down on the field. You see Mike Lush coming right there, right in the hole as it opens up. He fills it and fills the chest of Ken Lacey, who is still Boy, down is on the field. He's a tough customer, that Lush, isn't he? Yes, he is. 6'2", 190 out of East Stroudsburg. That ball was jammed right back into Ken Lacey's stomach. That wasn't the most complimentary, complimentary view of Mike Lush. <laughs> <laughs> Had to tie his shoe. 3-11 to play in the ball game. The first USFL championship game, and it's been a good one. Philadelphia wobbling badly at one time, down 17-3 and being outplayed on both sides of the bench. But storming back here, in, especially in this fourth quarter, to make a ball game out of it, and they are within three. Timeouts remaining. You can see the Stars have three, and Michigan two. Michigan disdaining the pass here in the late going, the primary tool that got them their 17 points. Well, the run has picked up a first down for them on this drive. That time... Mike Lush filling up the hole, coming in from a safety position on the blitz. Just really decked Ken Lacey, and he's still down on the field. They'll be looking at second down and 10, too. The hit didn't seem that severe, but the helmet and the ball were jammed right into Lacey's stomach. Now watch the hole opens up, and Lush just fills it. And right there, he puts his shoulder into his chest. And that's where the damage is done. They're helping Ken Lacey up now. There were two occasions I was hit in that chest area like that, Keith, and one time I, I suffered a bruised lung, the other time it was a bruised sternum. Well, remember that uh, Mike Owens, the quarterback of the Washington Federals this year, got a cracked sternum in the early going of the season. Lacey's out of the ball game. It's second down and 10 for Michigan. Time now is the ally of Michigan at 3 minutes, 11 seconds to play. Here's Tim Brandt with Scott Bitsky. Scott, you've got 311 left. You've done it before. Can you do it again? We got the confidence. We got our defense has to get the ball. And if our defense gets the ball, I think we'll go down and score. Now, what have you seen the last couple of series with the blitz? You guys have, have handled them a little yeah, bit better yeah, this they've year. Been, they've been bringing a linebacker, and they've been bringing the strong safety a lot. So, uh, you know, we're excited. Justin, I know what they're doing. So Chuck and I are working a little and work, working some of the short things, which I think we should have done a little early. Okay, let's talk serious now and get more specific. What do you do, and what kind of plays do you call down the last three minutes? But we just call the things that we've done against Chicago, Chicago and what we did when we needed uh, short yardage. Little under routes, uh, short 5, 8, 10 yard routes, maybe hit the backs if the receivers go 15, 20 yards and just march our way. We can't, we can't go out and try to get a big, big play because I don't think it's going to work. Okay, Scott, we'll be watching. Thank you. Philadelphia has just extended the timeout period by calling a timeout. So now they have two remaining and Michigan has two remaining. 
Everyone gathering their forces now. Everybody who's played is tired. Everyone is very tired, so they need that extra timeout. They want to give everything they can physically at this point to try and stop Michigan. Michigan, of course, wanting to pick up another first down. Second down and 10 from the 48 of Philadelphia. Lush comes up, shows blitz, and he's coming. Heats on, Bear gets it away, Carter's there, first down, he's loose, he's got some help, he's going for the corner, touchdown! Whoa! Now you would think by the expression on Jim Stanley's face that you saw there, Philadelphia that, scored. that it was a fourth down play and they lost the ball. Carter now, nine catches for 177 yards. Let's take a look at Mike Lush first. He's coming up on the blitz. They seem to be able to pick up on the signals of Bobby Abeer. He comes in on the blitz. He stopped, but there's other pressure on Bobby Abeer. Let's take a look at A.C., Anthony Carter out of Michigan. He drives Antonio Gibson back on the out right, on the out route, makes a catch, then just steps away. 25, Warner slips. Now he picks up a block from Derek Holloway, and he is into the end zone for the score. And he just threw away a football. The end zone camera, Bobby A. Beer. He's getting good protection. Right here, he's, oh, he just gets the ball away to Anthony Carter. The pressure coming in from the outside. Again, just too much speed. Well, that's enough for that. I've got to say right here that Scott Warner is coming off the field, being carried off the field. And that is bad, bad news for the Philadelphia defensive core. You see there at number 96. Frank Case will put the pressure on him. Warner, when he had a chance to make the tackle, as Anthony Carter was about to duck underneath him, just slipped and fell, may have twisted a knee or an ankle. The snap, the kick for the extra point is good. And so with three minutes and one second to play in the football game, the Michigan Panthers have jumped back to a 10-point lead over Philadelphia. 24 to 14, and Bobby Hebert now 309 yards. Well, it looks grim for the Philadelphia Stars now as the Michigan Panthers go back to what brought them here. Anthony Carter catching... The pass from Bobby Bear getting help from Holloway. It's 24 to 14. And here's Bojovic kickoff. Harvin, a yard deep in the end zone. Trying to go outside, gets outside. He is not a speed burner, but he is tough. And he forces Bojovic into making the tackle. <laughs> Bojovic hits him and knocks the ball loose, but it goes out of bounds. As you can see him, he is very vocal when he makes a tackle. He'll have a chance the to go home with a bruise. There's your total crowd, which we gave you earlier. Two minutes and 46 seconds to play in a ball game. A 10-point lead for Michigan. And Philadelphia now tries to go to work. the defense trying to protect the 10-point lead. Dropped by Fiuscina. His pass is away. Tries to drill it to Fitzke and he couldn't do it. And right now, let's go to Anthony Carter with Tim Brent. Hey, see, they were showing blitz all the way. Was it an audible? Did he change the play? Yeah, it was audible. It was the 80s Wolf and, uh, you know, Bobby called it a line of scrimmage. He told me to make sure I just take him deep because we had the route all day. All right, now, AC, you were having troubles in the beginning of the game. You dropped three passes that you normally wouldn't drop. What turned it around? Well, I tell you, I was a little tight in the first half. When I talked to Coach Stanley and Coach Dixon, they told me just take my time. Because once you already got it, you know, they can't take it away from me. And I just had to relax and settle down. Okay, Keith. <laughs> Took his time on the pass, Ross. <laughs> he talks fast. A little short shot to Tom Donovan. And Donovan is brought down after about a four-yard, maybe five-yard pickup. So it'll be third down at about five. And there's the clock marching along. Not good music to the ears of Philadelphia. Scott Pitsky told our Tim Brandt that they wanted to march down the field. At this point now, they do need the big play. They have to get it quickly. Penalty flags. Pass incomplete through the hands of Pitsky. You may have a holding on Corker, or you may have John going too soon. It looks like it might be holding. 
John Corker's walking up the field indicating holding against Philadelphia. John might have started a tad soon. John tries to anticipate a great deal, and they ah. call it on Corker. He does try and anticipate that snap count. He you was doing a fair job of lobbying, though. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Standing up, and he just takes off. Banizak nailed Fusina as the ball left. So that gives Philadelphia a first down. The ball moves out to the 44, and Michigan now 12 flags for 90 yards. Philadelphia 5 for 68. Offside. Defensive in. First down. Defensive Two minutes and 10 end. seconds. Not John Corker, but John Banizak, who they call on that. Yep. Let's take a look. You see Corker, he doesn't go off, but at the top, it was John Banizak being blocked there by Irv Eatman. Back to live action. You see this pass complete to Tom Donovan, trying to get to the marker. Can't do it. A little bit short of his first down. That stops the clock as he gets out of bounds, so they'll get one more play before the two-minute warning. And a little bit of a respite so they can go on the, go to the sideline, get another series of plays, talk over the strategy, and see what they can do about getting on the scoreboard quickly. 24-14. That 48-yard uh, bullet from... Bear to Carter so big. There's Donovan again loose, and this time Tommy has the first down, and we go to 157 to play of the football game, and that's a timeout time with two less than two minutes to go. So Philadelphia now nickel and diamond its way down the field, but they need 10 points to tie. With only a minute and 57 seconds to play, Philadelphia has the time using that short stuff to get it in the end zone, but that won't help them a whole bunch. Michigan then would have to make some kind of a mistake for Philadelphia to get the ball back. And uh, I don't know whether or not Jim Mora would go for the two-point try if he gets a touchdown or not. He might to pull within two points of the lead. I'm not going to venture a guess. I've been wrong every time so far. <laughs> You seen her to throw it. Going to run it instead as they gave him some room. And he runs it down to about the 31. He well short of a first down as Corker made the tackle. Everybody's got to be tired now. That's right. Chuck Fusina calling for a timeout. Using up one of their precious commodities. That takes him down to one remaining timeout in the ball game. And should they score, Keith, driving as they are right now, with the short plays downfield, they're not going to have a lot of time left. And if they use up all their timeouts, then the game is virtually over. Unless they get an onside kick. The Michigan defense looking like it welcomed the respite as Philadelphia called the time. Fusina's gone all the way at quarterback. Bear's gone all the way at quarterback. Bill Parkinson now. Getting the trainers off the field. Everybody's had their drink of water. A minute and 46 seconds to play in the game. Fusina now has thrown the ball 39 times in this game. That's the most pass attempts this season for Philadelphia. Bryant has 88 yards so far in the ball game on 13 carries. Fusina back on second down and four. Goes to the corner and nobody there. Rodney Parker and Willie Collier were both in the neighborhood, but neither one of them were really on the direct route for the ball. It looked like Chuck wanted to work a flag route, and it didn't. It just wasn't there. Well, I think what they're trying to do is just cross everybody up here, run a little pick route to free number 86, Willie Collier. But uh, it didn't work. Davis, Oliver Davis getting over the top of him, covering him completely. Clarence Chapman doing a good job covering Rodney Parker. So the picks. ball remains at the Michigan 31, third down. You can run crossing routes, but picks are illegal, but you run them all the time. Very few officials will ever call a pick route. Kelvin Bryant, the long remaining back. And he picks up Corker well, and the pass is complete to Tom Donovan, but Donovan is stuck short of a first down. Took a lick from David Greenwood. David Greenwood, he has been hitting hard all day. Coming up with big plays, and the clock continues to tick down. And I'm sure the Michigan Panthers can't wait for it just to run out. Fourth and two. Fourth down and two. The first down to Bryant. 
Kelvin Bryant is getting tackled short of the 20. And the clock shows 1-10. Stopping as the chains are moved. Philadelphia trying to go without a huddle here to save time. Michigan defenders taking their time. Up to the line of scrimmage without a huddle. 105 to play in the ball game. 24-14 Panthers. Fusina back to throw. Runs away from the pressure. Throws to Kelvin Bryant. Bryant is tackled for about a yard gain. And the clock continues to move. 50 seconds showing. Chuck Fusina making no effort to call a timeout. And now Kelvin Bryant calls the timeout. John Corker is hurt. He and Bryant have had quite a battle tonight. They've been next to each other like they were roommates all during the ball game. Corker coming in, getting three sacks on the day, trying to put consistent pressure on the passer. Being picked up several times by Kelvin Bryant, some excellent blocks by Bryant. He's had the responsibility to cover Kelvin Bryant several times out of the backfield, man to man. Right there you see John Corker. They call him the sack he won't man. Leave. Uh, he, he doesn't want to leave. Not in this ball game. He wants to stay to the end. The injury timeout gives Fusina a chance to come across and talk with just 44 seconds remaining to play in the ball game. John Corker was selected the most valuable player on the defense. On defense in the USFL. Philadelphia goes ahead and spends a timeout. That's their last one. They have none remaining. So Michigan hoping that that trophy with its silver its gold and its marble base will be in their locker room, and their quarterback, Bobby Abair, has been named the most valuable player. That's a good-looking trophy. It's 24 inches in height and 48 pounds, designed by a company in Spain. The book of trivia. Abair, 20 out of 39, 309 yards, three touchdowns. He was intercepted one time. Alan Harvin is now in on the second down and nine for Philadelphia. Fusina's pass is complete to Collier down near the 10-yard line. That is another first down, and that will again stop the clock with 37 seconds to go. But in all reality here now, I think it's reasonable to say that the Michigan Panthers at least have one hand on that trophy. I don't see 10 points in 35 seconds. Eight, maybe. Over the middle, the pass is incomplete. Scott Fitzke had his hands on it and then could not come up with it as he was, no, it's Donovan, Tom Donovan, as he was sandwiched between two defenders. You know, it is not likely that Philadelphia can score the touchdown here, then come back and get another touchdown to win this ball game. They would have to, get a, they have to, they would have to score quickly, then get an onside kick. But the Michigan team, if they were looking at that, would have a little fear in their hearts, afraid that if they made a mistake, but they very well could get that onside kick. Second down. Fusina runs away from coverage. Gets it back across to Donovan. Donovan going for the end zone. Just short. Thrown back by Oliver Davis. And 15 seconds to play in the ball game. Philadelphia with no timeouts remaining. They cannot stop the clock. Some of the... People coming out of the stands now. Fusina will get the snap away. Looking for the touchdown. Running away from coverage. People are all over the place. Throws it back into the end zone. Touchdown. There is a penalty flag on the field. Time has run out as Fusina hooks up with Rodney Parker. But the people running all over the football field. Apparently they had watched uh, proceedings up in Michigan last Sunday. Figured it'd be a fun thing to run down in the field. I, somewhere along the line, the fans should get the message that they don't help the game at all. If the penalty is against Michigan, the ball game can't end. Or if, the, if it's against the point. Point. Clear the field. We'll try the point. One after touchdown. The Clear penalty the field. is against Michigan. It is a touchdown for Philadelphia, and they are entitled to try for the extra point. So it is now a fait accompli. The Michigan Panthers are the champions of the inaugural season of the United States Football League. And well yes. deserving of that championship. Remarkable comeback from one and four after the first five games in their season. 
a continuous building process. The team, the players maturing, developing as athletes, acquiring the talent necessary to make the team come together, to get to the championship. Referee Bill Parkinson trying to get the field cleared so that Philadelphia can try for its extra point, and the crowd is cooperating. They are leaving the playing surface. The coaching staff of uh, Michigan, Jim Stanley, the head coach, Larry Corrier, George Dickinson, Bob, George Dixon, Bob Leahy, Mike Long, Dick Roach, Pete Rodriguez, and Kent Stevenson. For Philadelphia, Jim Mora, the head man, Jim Erkenbeck, John Peace, Joe Pendry, John Rosenberg, Jim Skipper, Carl Smith, Vince Tobin, Bill Kuharik, and Joe Marciano. Both teams had a good season. The disappointment is on the Philadelphia side. Being competitors and not winning a championship, the Philadelphia Stars, you know they can't. Right now, they're not thinking about the great distance they came with a 15-3 record in the first year. They're not thinking about the excellent play of their team, Kelvin Bryant, Irv Eatman, Scott Warner, Mike Lush. Right now, they're looking at a loss. To have come so far with the best record, to have come from behind in a great win over Chicago, and then not to have won the ball game, they feel a little empty right now. Jim Stanley now trying to help get the crowd back off the field. Uh, there was a charter flight that came out full, I understand, from Michigan, full of Panther fans that the owner, Alfred Tobman, helped arrange. So he's sort of been Santa Claus here in the last couple of weeks, hasn't he? <laughs> and the Michigan fans have appreciated all his efforts. 60,000 people turning out for the ball game and coming down for this one. Throughout the ball game, it just seems that the fans have been just a little pro-Michigan. Philadelphia is on the field for the extra point try, but they don't have a center. Now they get one out there, Braswell. Fusina, 25 out of 47 tonight for 188 yards and a touchdown. Bart Oates left his brother out there to play tackle and forgot to come in at center. Scoreboard's forgotten so far to put up the touchdown for the Stars. Fusina's passed, flipped in the end zone. Penalty flag is thrown in the end zone. Let's end it, guys. Why in the world an official would throw a flag at that point? I can't understand. 12 men on the field. Penalties declined. The point is good. And the final score will be Michigan 24 and Philadelphia 22. So it's a two-point victory for the Michigan Panthers to win the first United States Football League championship. Pretty good football game.